sophomore from St. Paul, solid as a freshman. Kirk Ferentz told us should be even better as a sophomore. Those are your backs receivers. Tony Moiaki has the potential to be something special, according to his head coach we spoke to earlier this week. Held back last year with Scott Chandler. Moiaki should come into his own this season. Second down and nine from the gun. Completed to the outside. Trey Strauss, Melvin Rice rides him out of bounds. Northern Illinois, starting line is brought to you by Dix. Larry English, healthy, hurt in the bowl game a year ago. He is an absolute hoss. Look for English today. Didn't practice much preseason, held him back. Tim McCarthy had a staff infection. Wasn't sure whether he was going to play. They announced it right before game time. Melvin Rice, two big picks a year ago to lead that secondary. An experienced bunch. Eight in the box, Charles. They love it. They really stacked the line of scrimmage. Now third down. Christensen overshoots everybody. Pressure from Larry English. Well, it, it, and Doug, that was one of the points. But also, too, it was hard for Jake Christensen to find the receiver because they were playing a man situation, a little bit of pressure. He couldn't quite see the receiver. It was trailing there. You can see they're going to talk to him every single time. Coach Ferentz wants him to really improve on some of those third down percentage plays. Coach Ferentz in his ninth year at Iowa, Iowa, of course, he was the offensive line coach in the heyday back in the early to mid-80s. And they went to those Rose Bowls. And the punt away by Ryan Donahue. Oh, that's a penalty. Donahue gets leveled. The ball's recovered by, by Iowa. And that was the lick by Jordan Bernstein. Doug, what did we say on the conference call this week? The special teams have to play better. Two penalties already with special teams. You've got to let the guy catch it. Bernstein doesn't even allow him to come up with the catch. Adonis was there, and he got hit before the ball ever got into his grips. So it'll be great field position now for Northern Illinois on the penalty. Well, that's what their coaches talked about. Special teams have to be key for us, and you can see right away they had a good return. That's taken back with the uh, illegal block in the back. Here you have a huge penalty with a punt returner getting ready to catch the ball, interference, and now you get the ball on your on their 40-yard line. Dan Nicholson, the junior quarterback for the Huskies. Air Wolf not there, so Montel Clan right up the gut. Let's go to the studio for an update on the Michigan game. Well, Doug Bell and a silent in the big house. We said Michigan had the lead. Check out Armani Edwards to Coco Hillary. Oh, my goodness. You talk about huge. This is a great play by App State to come out here. I'm telling you, man, big shocker. 24 yards, Julian Rauch. The kick, good. And Michigan goes down. 25 seconds to go, 34-32. Back to Chicago, Doug. That is, that is shocking to say the least. Second down, Huskies, Nicholson. Receiver falls down. And again, pressure from that outstanding defensive front for Iowa. There's Nicholson. Got the start last year when Phil Horvath went down against Western Michigan in the final home game for Northern Illinois. Nicholson played well in that game. He played well in the MAC championship as well. He started five games in 06, Doug, so he has some experience. Third down and 10. Nicholson with the pressure, and he goes down. Mitch King, seven sacks a year ago, his first of this season. What did Roy Whitkey say when we went on the field earlier today? 47 inside, who's Mitch King in the white. That guy right there is really good. They talk about Ewa Beamer 92 and Brian Madison, but who gets the pressure? The running back is off track. You have to go inside. Justin Anderson misses his assignment. It's coming from inside, not outside, and that's a mismatch when you have Mitch King going against the running back. Did better deep now to put the ball away for Northern Illinois. Andy Brodell back to receive the punt. He will feel it at the 16. Runs into his own man, and then a slew of Northern Illinois defenders bring him down. Not great field position for Iowa to start this 07 season.
Look out. Here comes the King Train mowing him down. Maybe your car is trying to tell you something. Maybe it's asking for the hard-working gasoline at Phillips 66, gas specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks, which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. Give your car what it's asking for. Give it Phillips 66. Hard-working gas. do the right thing. They call it being responsible. When it's a home insurance company, they call it Liberty Mutual. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. College football lives here on ESPN. And to see it all, you need the ESPN Game Plan Pay-Per-View Package. With key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, you'll get up to 12 extra games every Saturday. Order now and you'll be all set for a full season of great college football with ESPN Game Plan. ESPN Game Plan presented by Olivia. Just $129 for a limited time. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Games also available on ESPN360.com. The guys in my league said he was too small, buried on the depth chart, but I snagged him off waivers anyway. And 16 touchdowns later, I'm holding this. Ladies and gentlemen, a giant on my team, and in my heart, Maurice Jones-Drew. Looking for this year's fantasy heroes? Okay, relax, man. Get the best expert advice and analysis at ESPN. Sign up and play for free today at ESPN.com. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. First and 10, Jake Christensen had some trouble his first possession, bad field position. Albert Young gets gobbled up quickly inside. And for Northern Illinois, that was Craig Rush, big number 99, who grabbed him and wrestled him down. Well, Doug, they flow to the football so well. You can see the, the numbers on Christensen versus Northern. But what Northern Illinois is, they're not big up front, but they fill and flow. Eight or nine guys to the football. That's how they beat you. They don't want to get blocked. They want guys to get to the football, at least eight up. Northern loves to stack it in the box and maybe sneak a ninth guy in there. Young again. Hits by close to a first down. Let's go to the studio. Mike Gleason, please. Doug Bell, hold on to your seat. Charles, you do the same. 25 seconds, remember? Well, watch this. Chad Henney, Mario Manningham. Is Michigan going to pull out this game, guys? It looked like they were going to pull it out. It's a great catch by Manningham. Garrett Rivas has graduated. Well, Jason Gingo blocked. They call that the double thumper. And that block field goal. Corey Lynch with the block. Michigan goes down. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, what a shocker. Back here at Soldier Field, James Cleveland takes the ball for first, uh, just a yard on the reverse for Iowa. Well, you're gonna see, they wanna fake it in Albert Young. Ball handling is key right there to get the reverse. And James Cleveland, look at the flow though. One, two, three, four defenders, five coming up. That's what you have to have when you have a reverse play. Good assignment football by Brandon Bice. So second down and nine. Again, here comes the blitz. Oh, boy. Albert Young. He got brought down by Alex Kuba, the redshirt freshman who the coaches are really high on. They love this kid from Cary, Illinois. Well, Doug, I told you, they, they want to get to the ball. This is a one-gap team. Look at them. They go to their gap, the front guys, and then McCarthy coming over, but Kuba coming from way back deep. That's a strong safety that likes to get his head in there. 6'1", 202, red shirt freshman. He's a solid football player for this Northern Illinois, Illinois defense. Yeah. 
Denny Dornabas doesn't throw out the accolades very often, but he was high on that kid. And we'll call his name a lot today. Third down and nine, Christensen with time, threw into double coverage. Ball gets batted down. He's lucky that wasn't picked off. Really was. He was going to Moyaki, but what Northern Illinois did is they only sent four, dropped seven back, had guys all around. You always look for that tight end in that situation on third and about ten. And right there, Christensen looking down the field, but look, two defenders crossing right there. No room to throw that football. Hanson, one of those guys you mentioned dropping back, deflected that ball. Second putt of the game now for Ryan Donahue. And deep for Northern Illinois, Greg Turner. Boy, that was a bad punt. Three special teams miscues in the first half, Doug. That, and Donahue is one of those guys that they think really highly of, but he's a freshman. First kicking game in the Big, in, in the big Ten uniform. Special teams. Kirk Ferentz couldn't emphasize that enough when we spoke with him. He very <laughs> unsure about his special teams, and we're seeing that. All right. Here's today's fresh start presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. The two young men who hope to fill the shoes of Garrett Wolf. You know, we can talk about why it's so imperative that they do it. Dan Nicholson will get more opportunities to throw the ball if Justin Anderson and Clanton Montel do the job up front with the running game because that allows them to do the play action passing that they like to, to do. Clanton lines up behind Nicholson, goes over the right side and goes only for a couple of yards. Almost got his head taken off there by Klinkenborg. For Northern Illinois, Acevedo makes the move from left guard to left tackle, and he'll protect the back of Dan Nicholson this season. Looked very good here early on. Britt Davis, the go-to guy. Brandon Davis, not 100%. His older brother, of course, the starting lineup's brought to you by Dix. Second down and seven. Nicholson has his man. Rick Davis, we told you he was the go-to guy. Well, Doug, and what you see is a team that you leave them in the game. You let them stay Northern Illinois, and they can stay around, and then they come up and make plays. Madison was almost there. Brian Madison, 99, almost got there, but he didn't get it. He didn't get to Nicholson. You can see 99 on the left of your screen, almost getting there, but Rick Davis makes an outstanding catch between two defenders. His 100th career reception, that goes for 21. It's first and 10 from the 26. Plan goes over the right side. Hammers forward. That end zone is full of Northern Illinois fans. You can hear him, can't you? For Iowa up front, he's back and he's healthy. Uwebema, Kenny injured most of last year with his shoulder. And the coaches are pumped up that he is back. Lincoln Borg, a terrific story. Makes a lot of tackles on the Butkus Award watch list. And Shada is a man in the secondary, a senior. Big interception return last year and gets Purdue. Plant steps out of trouble, flag down. Goes for the first down, but that'll come back. They're going to get Eddie Wignavsky. Looks like against Mitch King inside. Or, or John Gross. But Mitch King, he, he, he elicits this. He's just so quick off that football. During the play, holding. Offense number 50. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Well, that's the center, Eddie, Eddie Udamski. Top of your pitcher. See right there in the middle. Right before the handoff is given. If you see there, that's the holding. Perfect. And when you see that, those guys, those back judges can see it and throw that flag in there. Good run by Clanton, but it was a hole. He wouldn't even have that run. Second and 13. Mitch King is causing the Northern Illinois front fits right now. There he is again. Mitch King has just been early on. <laughs> well, Doug, we said the running game has to be effective. And Eddie Udamski and Jason Anubak Bogey will have to play well. You can see right there, Mitch King locked up and still able to get over and make that play. Junior from Burlington High School. Terrific season in 06. A kid that was a terrific athlete. Really a multi-sport athlete in high school. There's the screen set up. Justin Anderson, his first touch. 
gets it back to the line of original line of scrimmage. And Mitch King almost tripped him up before he even got started. Well, they want to just get the ball inside and make something happen. Dan Nicholson takes a shot there from Matt Kroll. But look, right here, watch Mitch King, 47. You talk about the motor running, that's what you got to see from defensive linemen. They don't even give him a chance to get up the field, Justin Anderson. 44-yard attempt for Chris Mendick, the senior. It's a flat field, no crown, no problem for Mendick. No, he does miss it. It's wide right. It drifted there at the end. Looked like a good kick until the very end. And the fade sent it to the right. No score in Chicago. Hawkeyes, Huskies. We've left the most treasured game in the world to be played in the shadows, where its speed, power, and passion have remained unseen. Now, a new stage is set with new stars bringing light that soccer's time has come. I used to suffer from acne on my chest and back. The pimples were painful, unsightly, and embarrassing. But then I started using Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash is a treatment that works two ways. It's rich, creamy lather gently foams away excess oil from skin to cleanse and unclog pores, while the benzoyl peroxide medication works to kill the bacteria that cause acne. Enjoy healthy, clear skin with Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foam from Stiefel Labs is available at CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. It's the comedy that's highbrow. This place is really cool. Yeah, if you like hanging out with pretentious posers. Can I have a tall soy macchiato and a cranberry biscotti? Lowbrow. Come on, man. These ladies aren't going to make sweet love to themselves, are they? Or are they? <laughs> <laughs> and protruding brow. You never, never do. Don't. Ever. Goodbye. Caveman, just like you and me, only hairier. Premieres Tuesday, October 2nd on ABC. ESPNU 7 Eastern, it's Purdue against Toledo. Then at 10 Eastern, Texas Southern against Prairie View A&M. That's the slack. Saturday primetime college football presented by City on ESPNU. Looking deep. James Cleveland was out there, and Christensen misses him. Let's look one more time at the missed field goal. Chris Nindick from 44 yards. Looks like my golf game. He just pushed it over. It was on the line, and then it just yep. kind of died and went over to the side. Nindick was 20 of 27 a year ago in field goals, and you're right, trying to hook that back in, it just stayed out. Second down and 10 from the 20. You're a much better golfer than yeah. me, so you can talk, you ah. can get out the wedge and do all of that with it. That's frustrating <laughs> when that happened, I'm telling you. Second down, Christensen. Again, overshoots James Cleveland. I don't, I don't know if you, if you see it, but I see Jay Christensen with the jitters. And I didn't see this when I watched film of him last year. He looked so much more composed, so much more poised. Those last two throws, one in the overthrow, that last one, where it's easy, they tried to call a play for him. Ken O'Keefe said, okay, he's struggling a little bit. Let's get him a little easy one to throw, a little two-yard pass and turn it in a long game. He wasn't completing that one, so they got to settle him down. Third down and 10. Not a great start for the young man. Sophomore from Lockport High School, Lockport, Illinois. And a timeout for Christensen. They're worried about Larry English. They're calling plays. Raphael Eubank is trying to get something out to Kyle Callaway. They're arguing at the line of scrimmage because the center has to make a call. Kirk Ferentz, we'll talk it over with his quarterback, and we'll talk it over with Mike Gleason. Let's go to the studio. All right, Doug, the Wisconsin Badgers and Camp Randall taking on the Cougars of Washington State. Down 7-0, Luke. Yeah, 
Wisconsin Tyler Donovan here with the touchdown pass. Working on their balance. They know they got P.J. Hill, but they need to throw the ball. That's Luke Swan tied at seven in Camp Randall, Doug. All right, Washington State's got some speed, Charles. Last year at Auburn, they really impressed Tommy Tuberville. Will not surprise me to stay out. See that one stay close well into the fourth quarter. Got a close game here at Soldier Field. Jay Christensen on third down with time over the middle. Andy Brodell drops it, had it, dropped it. Fourth down. Well, Andy Brodell is the leading receiver with Dominique Davis gone now, and he had that ball right in his bread basket. Good job by Jay Christensen setting up going a rocket, but he just drops the football. Now, that's one thing I'll talk about. Footballs, when they first come out, are very slick and slippery. They don't get a chance to put them in the dryer like they used to. I got one up here. I'll show you at halftime what I mean by that. A little slip. Should have called it that. Football 101 with Charles Arbuckle coming up. I'm looking forward to that. You're teaching me some things. Ryan Donahue, again, has been the busiest man so far for Iowa. His third punt. Greg Turner fields it at the 15, right up the gut. And still on his feet. And he gets brought down around the 27 yard line. Good field position for the Huskies. We'll see if they can get something going. Again, no score in the Windy City. For a girl like her. Oh, sorry. You all right? Yeah. Falling for a guy can be a little dangerous. Anything that can go wrong will. September 21st. Oh. Get ready. Now? Not now. For a shocking good time. <gasps> good luck, Chuck. Oh. Rated R in theater September 21st. Tuesdays on ESPNU. Take a share in the summer house. All right, boys. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Running out of that tunnel. Unbelievable. With the season coming to an end, don't miss another day oh. in the Summer House. Well, that was definitely an experience just to look around the stadium. Summer House, Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Presented by Dick Sporting Goods. No. 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 What? It had a virus. The computer's not the problem, Mr. Tucker. It's your network. With Verizon high-speed internet, you'd have a dedicated line and automatic security updates every three hours to keep viruses out. You could also get firewall and spyware protection. Hmm. Step up to Verizon high-speed internet for one low price. When you do, you can add the most advanced security protection available for just a few dollars more. Get internet service 20 times faster than dial-up, plus the unsurpassed protection of the Verizon Internet Security Suite, all on the network you know and trust. You giving rides? Not today. The speed you need, the security you deserve, all on a dedicated line. Order Verizon high-speed internet for one low price and get the Verizon Internet Security Suite for just a few dollars more. Visit us online for an even better offer or call 1-866-730-9361 now. Verizon, it's the network. It's a game that's been dominated by the defensive fronts so far for Iowa and Northern Illinois. Ryan Donahue, a 57-yard punt as Iowa tries to work through some early season question marks with special teams. Nicholson goes down, but not before delivering a pass to Justin Anderson. Devin Moylan rides him out of bounds. Let's find out about Wake Forest Boston College. Back in the studio. All right, Doug, uh, Tim, it looks like Wake has a uh, chip on their shoulder already up. Seven zip. Absolutely. No one's expecting Wake Forest to come out and have a big year, but I'm telling you, they're going to open up some eyes this year. Skinner to Kenneth Moore, 14 zip. Back to Soldier Field, Doug. All right, good to hear from Tim McKire, the mouth of the South. I remember when Timmy <laughs> played with the Falcons and was always doing some trash talking. Out of Port Arthur, Texas. Dan Nicholson, three for four. In the face of that storm. Max protect. Had his man Britt Davis just missed him. He had, he had him beat. He had him beat. And that's what you got to have. You got to make those. Ja Charles Godfrey that was beat on that play. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Soldier Field, Chicago. Doug Bell alongside Charles Arbuckle, the former UCLA star. Iowa defeated Northern Illinois last year, 24-14, in Iowa City. And this is the first time Northern Illinois has hosted a Big Ten team at home.
And they moved the game to Soldier Field because of the big crowd. Here we are sold out. Justin Anderson, right side. Trying to stretch it to the first down. It's close. Yes, it, it's a first down. Hey, Doug, I like the fact that they went for that deep pass on the first, on that other one, on second and one, and then come back, get outside, get away from Mitch King. What about the sellout here, Charles? Terrific atmosphere. Largest crowd for a Mac home game. I mean, this is this is tremendous, although most of them are Iowa fans. Well, they traveled so well, but the Northern Illinois fans are represented as well. I mean, you got a good atmosphere for a college football game in a pro stadium. That was a first down. Dan Nicholson, three-step drop. Has his man. Fumbles the football. Britt Davis. And Iowa says they have it. It's a matter of whether or not the ball is inbound. It's an initial great move by Britt Davis. The officials now huddled up to find out. Britt Davis had the first, coughed it up. It was the ball inbound. So it is Northern Illinois football. Let's watch the replay. Well, initially a great move by Britt Davis of making Adam Shade a miss. And I think the ball is going to go out of bounds. When the, yes, right there, the ball that never was in possession went out of bounds. First and 10 from the 47. Flags down everywhere. Mike Huppel jumped in there, came up limping just a little bit. You know, Doug, this front seven is so strong. Only one guy, A.J. Eads, out of that front seven, is, is, has not had any ma major experience. He played quite a bit last year. Holding offense, number 82. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That's Reed Cunningham, the backup tight end. We said Brandon Davis struggling with the knee is playing, and he's in, on the field as well. They run a lot of two tights, Northern Illinois. But you're going to see 83 on the right of your screen, hand outside, then he's never letting him go. And that's Ryan Matheson, who's a tough player. you got to hold him some time. <laughs> Had to wrestle him down. Iowa's front four, so active. Good protection this time for Nicholson. Intercepted. Charles Godfrey, the pick for the Hawkeyes. Charles Godfrey is one of those guys that has been consistent for this Iowa defense. The senior out of Baytown, Texas, Robert E. Lee High School, goes up and makes an outstanding grab. Now, the receiver looks open. It's a corner route, great protection, and look at the throw. Too much air under it, and look at this. He goes up. I believe I can fly. No, I believe I can grab this pick. Great job by Charles Godfrey. A year ago, he received a hustle award for his outstanding play on special teams. Godfrey showed a lot of athleticism in that play. 83 tackles last year, also from the corner position. He got up. Christensen. Now one for seven. Slow start for the young man. And Charles, don't forget ESPNU.com, the new online source for all things in college sports. And it really is terrific. Video, audio highlights, podcasts, live streaming games, scores, columns, blogs, you name it. We got it. ESPNU.com. Hey, even though he's one for seven, Jay Christensen, there's a lot of drop footballs also. It's off to Albert Young over the left side. That's going to be a tough go. John Tranchitella in there, and you saw Larry English. There's big 69, Alex Crutch. Well, they come with the other back now. Damian Sims is in the game now. He's that change of pace back. Albert Young is, is very fast and effective inside the tackle. They both are built similarly, but Damian Sims more of a shifty escape ability back, number 28. He's put on some weight in the offseason, and the coaches say he's a much better pass blocker now, and that's what he may be doing now on third down and five. Hawkeyes 0 for 3 on third down conversion so far. He's in there blocking. Lots of time. First down. Rodell over the middle. On the other side of the 50-yard line. Well, Jake Christensen bought him a little time. Good protection. And he 
stays in that pocket. He doesn't, he doesn't get rattled. That's what I like when I watch film with this guy. Watch him. He takes his time. Good, good. He sees the pressure, but he steps up and just fires it in there to Brodell, who does a very good job of catching the football. Iowa was 41% on third down conversions. That's an area where they really have to improve. That's why they only won one game out of the last seven. And that one game they won? Northern Illinois. That was a 16-yard pickup. Looked pretty snazzy. And Sims did a nice job picking up a block over the middle. Good coverage there. Looking for Moyaki. Defender was right there. Let's go to the studio for another cut in West Virginia. Here's Boston College down 14 zip. Yeah, Matt Ryan, the top pass in the ACC last year. Healthy this year coming in, hooks up with his favorite partner, Kevin Challenger. These two hooked up quite a bit last year. Challenger in for the score. How about Western Michigan down in West Virginia? 7-0, reaching into the bag of tricks for some trickeration. And they're in for the score. And uh, let's go back to Soldier Field now with Doug. All right, Glee, West Virginia could roll up some big numbers in that one before all is said and done. Three steps back, nowhere to go. Christensen better get down. He gets eaten up. Big Larry English swallowed him up. <laughs> well, you know who started that play? Brandon Bice. He gave it up for the team and got blocked. And then he comes and just keeps after it. And Larry English on the backside, who's a key guy. Watch to the left of your screen. You're going to see a good block by Damian Sims. And, but Bice is able to get those feet. And look at all those defenders. We talk about hustle to the football. There's about seven or eight guys every time. A good block right there, but it knocked him right into it. That's why coaches don't like you to cut sometimes, because when you cut them, they fall into the quarterback. Third down and 10. Christensen. No time. Big lick. Oh, and he takes another shot. Doug, just say everybody on the Husky D. Wow. <laughs> Corey Hansen got in there initially, and then Spencer Williamson, as he's being held up, finishing him off. He's got to learn to go down. Yeah, well, you got to say everybody, all the Huskies, because you can see up the middle they're coming. Corey Hansen right there. I mean, just so many guys just getting to the football with the hustle effort of not letting Jake Christensen get the ball off. Donahue, his last punt went for 57 yards. Greg Turner again deep back at the 15. Fair catch called for and caught at the 14 yard line by Greg Turner. Hey, some big high school action coming up on ESPN and ESPNU at noon Eastern at St. X. Number four in the ESPN Top 25, the Bombers of Ohio face DeMatha, Maryland, the Stags. Then at 3.30 Eastern, it's Central Catholic out of Pennsylvania taking on Northmont, Ohio. It's all part of the Burger King, Kirk Herb Street, Ohio versus USA Challenge on ESPN and the U on Sunday. Hawkeye fans. Boy, they were out in full force today walking around this stadium down on Lakeshore Drive this morning as Charles was doing his road work. That was road work you were doing, right? Was out there, trying to stay in shape. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I tell you, Adam Shader showed me some shape right there coming up, making a good stop. Last time he missed a tackle, but he said, no, not this time. Britt Davis, look at that. He said, I, I think I'm going to make a move. No, Adam Shaver shuts him down. Picked up five, though, second down at five. There you see the numbers. Those seven losses, the defense, injuries were a part of that. Gave up some big numbers a year ago. Montel Clanton over the right side. Pushes forward for maybe a yard. But, Doug, you know, when we talked to Norm Parker earlier this week, he said, you know, we didn't play well. He said, we have a lot of veteran guys on, on this front. Ewa Bima was hurt. But we didn't play well as a unit. These guys are one year older. They should be a lot better this year. There's Joe Novak. And what a wonderful story. Novak has built this Northern Illinois program from where it was when he first took it over, and it was in shambles. But really one of the most respected programs now in the Mac, but in the country. There's a first down. Greg Turner on the receiving end. 
complete. Nicholson moves around that pocket, doesn't he? He does. He finds time to, to give his receivers, and they move around. And also, too, Doug, I think the key is they're not, they're not scared of the side with defense. They know that front seven's going to come. But if they spread them out and make them do some things, they can find receivers. Well, we talked about the turnaround. First five years, you see the record not so good. Last five, he's been terrific. Some big wins in there. I remember when he went to Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama on their home field. Montel Clinton gets stood up. A.J. Eads in there for Iowa, along with big uh, Iwebama. Kenny healthy again. Good to see him performing up to his standards. Oh, he is a tough guy. He is a tough, strong individual at that defensive end position. Uh, looks like he's breathing a little heavy, too. As we wrap up the first quarter, it's been dominated by the defensive units. It's a gorgeous Saturday in Chicago, Northern Illinois and Iowa, kicking things off. The FIFA Under-17 World Cup continues through September 9th on ESPNU. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Okay. <laughs> sorry. We're sorry. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Jack Link's jerky. Feed your wild side. Let's face it, life is unpredictable. Those little surprises can cost big money. We're Think Cash, and that's why we're here. When your car is broken down and you gotta get around. Think cash. When an unexpected bill catches you by surprise, what are you waiting for? Think cash. I found Think Cash. It worked really easy. It was quick. Within two minutes, I was approved. Within the next day, I had my money. With Think Cash, it's easy to get the cash you need fast. Apply online or by phone in minutes. There's no standing in line, no paperwork, no hassles. You'll find out in seconds how much cash you can get. Think Cash treated me like a person and not a number. I was able to get approved for $750, even without perfect credit. With Think Cash, you don't need perfect credit. You don't need to own a home. The cash arrives in your bank account the next day. Even if you don't need cash right now, call us now to find out how much you can get. There's no obligation. Is your fridge on the fritz? Think Cash. When your bank account is running low, don't bounce checks. Think cash. We make borrowing easy. You can apply online, or you can call a helpful Think Cash loan specialist. You can have money in your bank account tomorrow morning, and your payments will be under $100 every two weeks. Everybody needs a little extra cash from time to time. It's my job to help you get the cash you need as fast as possible. Want to find out how much cash you can get? Call now, or visit thinkcash.com to apply. Join the thousands of customers that count on us for their cash needs. It only takes a few minutes, and you'll get an answer in just seconds. You don't need perfect credit, and you don't need to own a home. You can have $250 to $2,000 as soon as tomorrow morning with no paperwork and no hassles. Call Think Cash today. Watching ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate as we start the second quarter. Iowa, Northern Illinois, scoreless so far. Dan Nicholson, oh, looks back the other way. Charles Godfrey hustles up to make the stop. Let's go to the Sports Center U studio, Mike Gleason. You shall I stand for Jim Harbaugh's uh, debut, and uh, Tim, uh, Ben Olsen gets the Bruins going. Yes, he does. Here he is hooking up with my man, Joe Cowan Sr., big target. Did a good job. Touchdown. Well, Patrick Cowan has a hammy, so Olsen doesn't have to look over his shoulder. Bruins up 7-0, Doug. All right, Charles Harbuckle, your UCLA Bruins looking good early. Well, that's early. That's <laughs> <laughs> early. <laughs> Third down and eight. The screen set up for Justin Anderson and he's working hard but he'll come up a half a yard short Brian Madison hustled down there to make the stop 
Doug, that's the one guy they talked a lot about, Justin Anderson, wanting to get him in the game because of this. His ability to catch the ball and run with it. They want to do a lot more screens, which you do against a fast team like Iowa up in front. You want to make them move around, and he did a good job. Didn't quite get there, but you can see how he has some nice moves and able to get the ball up the field. Andy Ditbenner will punt for the Huskies. That's the difference in Iowa and Northern Illinois. The Huskies return their punter and kicker, and both were very good a year ago. Rodell will field this at the 24. Right up the middle, breaks it to the outside. Rodell has one man to beat, Albert. And he gets wrestled out of bounds. That was Justin Anderson who saved the touchdown. Don't let him fool. 10, 400 meter guy in high school. Played running back, more of a running back. Wasn't a receiver in the DB, Doug. And watch how fast he is and good blocking this time. And what I like about Brodell, 10 yards already gone before anybody really touches him. And look at this, he tries to set it up. Justin Anderson finally gets him out. But look at the blocks. They set that up perfectly. He stays on the numbers, gets a little touch right there, and then he's gone. Look at this track speed by Andy Brodell. That's why they expect a lot of big things from him this year, being the lead receiver, but also a guy that has that 10, 400 meter speed coming out of high school. 46 yard return. Well, he turned on the Jets. Yeah, well, it, it, it was deceiving. He's 6'5", 200, 6'3", excuse me, 200 pounds. The best start for the Hawkeyes as far as field position from the 20, Christensen. Young right up the middle. That was a nice push by the offensive line. Well, on the cutback lanes or stretch plays or zone blocking, it's always a hope opening on the backside. So you see front side is good, but if you don't protect the backside, you're going to pick up seven, eight yards on, on that game. Albert Young healthy again, really hampered by several injuries a year ago. Second down and three. Right up the middle again, first down for Iowa. Inside the six yard line, Melvin Rice finally wrestled him down. That's more like it. Well, Doug, and also too, what did Iowa say they need to do? Better special teams play will set all this up. So right there, very decisive by Albert Young. He sees the hole and he just goes through. The line gets a great push and they're reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Two yards back, that allows that back to pick up nice yard. We talked about Eubanks, the center, and he really was moving him backwards that time. First and goal for the Hawkeyes. Albert Young, touchdown, Iowa! Doug, I like that drive by Iowa. They didn't do anything fancy. They got back to their old ways, come off the football, move the pile. Raphael Eubanks on every one of those plays. Watch this block on Tim McCarthy. I mean, he takes Tim McCarthy 53 out of the play, and that's where the ball is going. Watch, right there. There's no one there to touch Albert Young because Raphael Eubanks and Tim McCarthy, the battle was right there, and it was won by Iowa. Austin Signor on for the extra point. And he misses it. That's wide, too. Attention, diabetic patients with Medicare. I have diabetes, and testing my blood sugar on my fingers every day is so painful. I wish there were a better way. Now, there is. With this meter, you can test on your arm with less pain. Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Minch, and I've been taking care of diabetic patients for over 30 years. With this new meter, you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. You can test on your arm. It hurts less. Some patients say it doesn't hurt at all. I called and got my meter. Now my fingers don't hurt anymore. The club will send your diabetes supplies right to your home, and we will build Medicare. Membership is free, and so is shipping. So call us now. Call now to get your meter and test with less pain. Call Diabetes Care Club at 1-800-396-3535. That's 1-800-396-3535. Call now. I'm glad I did.
Carpoolers, a new comedy, premieres Tuesday, October 2nd on ABC. Start here. Presented by Southwest Airlines, Tennessee versus Cal. Tonight at 8 Eastern, college football lives here. The Hawkeyes on top 6-0, thanks to Andy Brodell, who had that terrific punt return. And then Albert Young, working behind that offensive line, the zone blocking scheme, nothing fancy. And he vaults into the end zone. The only negative, they missed the extra point. Yeah, and, and I think Northern Illinois has had a chance to really capitalize on Iowa, but Iowa finally woke up on offense and decided three straight runs. Well, Greg Turner is deep. Along with Evans, Adonis, that's Adonis. He has a seam. And he gets brought down to 35. That was Austin Signor, the kicker, who's a big kid, 6'4", 230. Nice tackle. Let's go to the studio. Well, Doug, the Broncos of Western Michigan down 7-6 to West Virginia. Not for long. Heisman candidate to Heisman candidate. Pat White throws it to his buddy Sharon the love to Steve Slate. 34th touchdown in his last 21 games. How about P.J. Hill only averaging three yards of burst against the Cougars, but he pounds his way into the end zone. Cougars, Badgers tied at 14, Camp Randall, Doug. All right, I told you. That's going to be a close one. Yeah, I, I think so too, Doug. But I'll tell you what, the dynamic duo for West Virginia are outstanding. Let's see what Nicholson can do. Over the middle to Justin Anderson. In and out of his hand. And a, again, a good tackle there by Austin Signor. Watch him wrap him up. He's a big kid, a good athlete, not your uh, typical physical presence of a normal kicker. Oh, I mean, he came, look, perfect form. Got his head across and just wrapped him up. Made a nice tackle. Look at him. Got his gun showing. <laughs> look, he got the little scruff out of him. Man, <laughs> that's not a kick. <laughs> He's talking about it. Justin Anderson, again, nowhere to go. Matt Kroll from Iowa. And that front four is so active, Charles. I mean, they're all over the place. You know why? They recruited a lot of these guys as undersized. I mean, we talked to Norm Parker. He said, you know, Iwo Bima, Madison, they all played different positions in high school. The two inside guys, Crowell and King, 53 and 47, they were running backs and linebackers in high school. So that's why they're able to move around. 26 straight starts for Matt Crowell. Third down. Short game. Greg Turner on the receiving end. But the Huskies will have to punt one more time. And Dan Nicholson did a lot of pressure on him. Well, you see Mitch King right away with a great swim move and get to the Nicholson. Athleticism is key at the defensive tackle position. Then you have Matt Kroll, his buddy in, in crime, and then Mitch King again. The K and K crew in the middle. So much focus on the M E will be him a 92 and Madison 99. You can't forget about King and Kroll inside. Did Benner on to kick it away for Northern Illinois. Brodell will field this. Oh, it takes a funny bounce. And he lets it go. And Northern Illinois went down it at the four-yard line. Jake Christensen will be in a hole with the Hawkeyes on top, 6-0. Are these numbers right? Yes. Do you know what this means? It means we have doubled in the last six months. So we're going to have to hire more people to move into a bigger space to get those key card things. But we'll need to order a lot more wood. But what if this continues? Dave, isn't that kind of the idea? Citibank Business Banking. Whatever your growing business needs, Citibank's there with guidance and customized solutions to help your business thrive. Come to Citi and let's get it done. The interaction studied in chemistry may be between two chemical substances or between matter and energy.
college football primetime. Florida State versus Clemson, Monday night at 8 Eastern. College football lives here. Football presented by Allstate is brought to you by City. Let's get it done. And Dick's Sporting Goods every season starts at Dick's. Iowa deep from their four yard line. Albert Young spins out of one tackle, gets it out to the 10. He's a weapon. Well, you know, Doug, last year he didn't have that ability to shift around and make people miss. He's got it back now. You can see it. Knee injuries, slow running backs down, ankle injuries, slow people down. So he's back in full effect. Andy Brodell had that big punt return, and on that play, the kicker, the punter for Northern Illinois, Andy Ditbenner, he just absolutely got nailed. And for at least the time being, he is out of the game. Young has been the workhorse here. First down for Iowa. Well, you talk about a guy having ESP. I like to call running backs that explosion speed and then power. But let's add a V to that. Watch Albert Young go to the left of your screen. Look at the line blocking, and he makes a decisive cut inside. He sets up two or three guys to go outside. Watch right here. Boom. It's the vision there to go along with the explosion speed and the power. Nothing fancy. Albert Young, nine carries, now 51 yards. That's where they can attack this Northern Illinois defense, on the ground. Right back at him. Does a nice job ducking the first defender and then moving forward. Well, Doug, they had three runs on that touchdown drive, two so far, five in a row. They want to calm Christensen down, and what it does, it gets everybody up, gets them, gets them up, and then they can go with the play-action pass. Albert Young, a New Jersey kid who was unbelievable in 05. And last year, all sorts of injuries, had a sore left knee that hampered him all year long. Actually missed a couple of games. And now they, they think he's back to his 05 form. Looks pretty good so far. Let's check in with Mike Gleason in the studio. Well, Tim McCarr, if it's not Steve Slayton for West Virginia, might as well be Pat White. And absolutely it is. Patrick White, an outstanding quarterback. You talk about a Heisman candidate. Here he is making an outstanding run out here directing traffic. He can block this guy, scoring in that touchdown. Nice run. I'll catch you, White. Oh, near 21-6. Ben Olsen, the southpaw. Gavin Ketchum, UCLA up 14-zip on Stanford. Back to Soldier Field. All right. Well, I'll tell you, Jay Norvell is the offensive coordinator. He came from Nebraska. Before that, he was with the Colts. So he's got a great package there. And with that defense, I think they'll be better. But I'm still not sure. <laughs> First and 10, Christensen has his man out there. And it's caught. James Cleveland down to the 26-yard line. Doug, what did I say a few plays ago? Run the ball. Run the ball effectively. Run it again come back with a nice little play action pass because the defense now is on their heels they're thinking watch watch how those linebackers look they come up as soon as he puts that ball in there to Damian Sims it even stops the corners also everybody's thinking run and the safety gets sucked in look at the safety 24 Bradley Pruitt he's up too far on that skinny post he thinks he has inside help he's beat deep by James Cleveland 40 yards Christensen to Cleveland and back to the ground Damian Sims right side Sims sees it he's out of bounds stepped out of bounds he showed a little burst oh, I told you he was a guy that can come in and make and have a little change up you know, he's come with some heat and then you bring somebody in with even more heat look at him get outside and that wasn't good assignment football by Alex Kuba 
who is a young guy, but you can see they're going, they're really attacking this defense now. And this is the way you do it with a fast defense. You go at them and you push them off the ball and then you get around those edges. First and goal from the four yard line. That's Eubanks calling the signals at center. Albert Young. That was a nice play by the Northern oh, defense. Melvin Rice got up in there as well as they really stacked the box that time. We're at Soldier Field in Chicago. Largest crowd to ever see a MAC home game. 61,500 strong watching the Huskies against the Hawkeyes. Doug Bell along with Charles Arbuckle. A terrific atmosphere. Lots of Iowa people. And they must like what they see so far. <laughs> They have to be happy now that offense is really starting to get in gear. Second and goal. Christensen really squats down low. And it's a touchdown Iowa. Brandon Myers on the receiving end. Well, great play call by Iowa. It's an Moyaki in motion. They know they have coverage behind him and Jake Christensen can get his pre-snap read. Now you see the motion, it tells you it's going to be a little bit of a zone. Brandon Myers with that quick five yard out. All you need to do is get to the one yard line. He can match up with Kuba because he's much bigger. Moyaki pulls the other safety outside. You see 24 right there. Bradley Pruitt creates space, creates a touchdown. All smiles, Jake Christensen. This time the extra point is good by Austin Sigdor. And the Hawkeyes have vaulted out on top, 13-0. Christensen threads the needle. Touchdown, Myers. No curb appeal. Hate the color. Oh, honey, this is it. Uh, what you got there is an infestation. A lot of life happens in your car. Conoco and 76 Quality Pro Clean Gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. The pink wasn't so bad. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco and 76 Quality Pro Clean Gasolines. The NASCAR Nextel Cup Series on ESPN. With his second win of the season, Carl Edwards scored big at Bristol. Now, as the race to the chase heads to California, the battle to get off the bubble intensifies with Dale Jr. fighting to make it in. Every lap matters at the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series at California, presented by Principal Financial, tomorrow at 7 on ESPN. And catch the Camping World 300 at California, tonight at 9.45 on ESPN2. When you want to buy great products at the lowest prices you've ever seen, just turn to your computer, satisfaction guaranteed. Every day low prices and free shipping and Google checkout is preferred. The next time you're gonna shop online, just remember these keywords. Buy.com, oh yeah. Code Red, need to hide. You again. Hey, where can I compare auto insurance prices at this hour? Easy. Get your insurance quote, compare prices from other companies instantly online. I save hundreds. You'll save time, too. Quote, buy, buy print. print. Not much compares with the convenience of insurance. I gotta fly. If you're on the go, you gotta have insurance. Compare and save on auto insurance. Visit insurance.com today. College football presented by Allstate is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's and City. Let's get it done. Hawkeyes with that 13 0 lead. Looks like this one will go out of bounds, and it does. So, Northern Illinois will have several options now. Looks like they'll uh, may have Iowa re-kick, and they're looking over the Northern Illinois sideline to see. The kick out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. And that's one of the options now. You can take the ball at the 35. 
Well. Those are the new rules. Penalty enforced from the spot of the return, and the penalty enforced from the previous spot will replay the down. So good field position. That has not been an issue for the Huskies today. They've just been stymied by this Iowa defense, although that's a nice play. Britt Davis on the receiving end. He is the go-to guy for Northern Illinois. He really is, Doug. And I think also, too, they can attack the secondary, especially the safeties. Harold Dalton and Devin Moylan, even though they have some experience, but one's a senior, the other's a junior. They are young in their play. They didn't play a whole lot last year. And I think that's where Northern Illinois has to attack with big routes, big deep ends, and crossing patterns to get those safeties off kilter. Nicholson is a Chicago kid, Brother Rice High School. This is an exciting event for him playing here at Soldier Field. Going nowhere, Montel Clinton. Mike Humple comes up to make the stop, and that was Brian Madison as well. Let's check in with Mike Gleason. And Steve Israel, BC got slugged in the mouth, but the Eagles responded. You know, Matt Ryan is starting to heat up against the Deacons DBs. He finds Rich Gunnell with a bomb. Whoa. Great job. You got to get deeper than the deepest. Touchdown. Tied at 14, Doug. All right, Steve Israel, the Flash is in there now. Oh, yeah. You got the mouth of the South, Makai, and the Flash, well, Steve Israel. They, they both are there, and they're just so quick. You don't know which one is going to come off. <laughs> Second down and nine. Flag down. And again, a mixed officiating crew. Four Big Ten officials. False start. Offense, number 60. Five yards. The down remains second. Three MAC officials. That's Dave Whitvote. And the movement from uh, John Brost. Came well, up out of that stance a little early. Well, when you're getting beat at, on the line of scrimmage, <laughs> that's what worries you. But those guys have struggled with those outside guys. Madison has been very active, as always. Iwebama is playing well. We mentioned King earlier. To the outside it goes to the tight end, Reed Cunningham. And he gets chopped down by Adam Shada. You know, I think if you're Northern Illinois, you thought, hey, we can run the football. But even last year in the first half, Garrett Wolf struggled. So you still got to somewhat put the ball on the ground. But the way they're going to get the ball moving down the field is throwing the football. Coming into this drive, Doug, they only had four rushing yards in the game. Not enough to really impact that Iowa defense. Third down and seven. Nicholson needs time. Has it. Has his man. Who else? Britt Davis, first down Husky. And again, the in route, or just go down the field, turn inside, and kind of drift where those safeties should be. The defensive coverage was good, but the scramble ability of Dan Nicholson and then also Britt Davis kind of staying alive. We're not talking about John Travolta in his young years, but Britt Davis moving and staying, getting his eyesight with the quarterback so he can see him. Look, he, the quarterback's looking for him. Okay, I got to find him. He finds him on the run. Good throw. Britt Davis makes that seven available, catches the first down. Five catches now for Davis for 70 yards. Nicholson, a little trickery in the backfield. Montel Clinton down to the 20-yard line. Fumble. Let's see who comes up with it. Looks like Iowa comes out of it. Shada has the football. The line judge is pointing the other way, saying that he was down already. But Shada definitely came up with the football. Now, they're going to have a console here. If the whistle had been blown, it doesn't matter what happened. Let's see what they come up with. Of course, Dave Whitvote has been around a long time. He said it's Northern Illinois football. The whistle had blown. Well, that takes away the replay rule. But the whistle, if the whistle blows, then you can't do it. He did lose that football. Well, he did it, lose the football. It looked like perhaps, yeah, his body was down. It was awful close, but I think. Time out. The play is under review. All right, so yeah. the whistle did not blow. See, I, I heard a whistle like you did, Doug, thinking, but that was the whistle just to come in and say, we're coming in to check this out. Joe Novak. Hoping this goes his way. This angle is really hard to tell. But the ball looks like it's coming out before he goes down. Can't tell. That's inconclusive. That's, that's a hard one to see. 
It's hit right there by Klinkenberg. Klinkenberg board. And it looks like the ball is out. But again, it's hard to yeah. tell. Has to be indisputable video evidence. Can't tell. Well, from that angle, it looks like Klinkenborg had the ball with him when he was falling one way and Clanton the other way. But to your point, if they clearly can't make a decision or see it, then that rules it null and void. I mean, right there, you would say, I can't see it, but to the to the eye, you can think that Klinkenborg has the ball in his bread basket, pulling it away when he's going down. Clearly, the ball came free, but did it come free after his bottom laid on the ground there? It's yeah. hard to tell. Coach Novak does not look like he's feeling well. Of course, he's down 13 nothing. One more look. Plan was just surrounded by Hawkeyes who just block it, and you really can't get a clean look. Doug, I'll go back to the point also. Northern Illinois was plus 10 in turnover margin last year. Iowa was minus 11. Iowa has done a very, very good job today of protecting the football. And Northern right there has fumbled on the sideline with Britt Davis earlier where the ball went out of bounds. This time could go the other way. All right, here's a new look. This could open things up. Yeah, they're gonna have the, they're gonna have all the angles that we see. That ball is out before he goes down from that look. But the problem is number 40, Mike Klinkenborg, his body is kind of blocking every angle. That's why it's taking so long for them to make the decision. Watch right here. You see 40 coming to your screen. He hits him, and the ball is coming out as Clanton is falling down, and he is clearly loose. It's just hard to tell. Let's listen in. A stands as ruled on the field. First down, Northern Illinois. Couldn't tell. No. Nothing definitive. And they kept looking at every angle that we had. Every angle that we have, the officials get to see that also. So the folks at home, you were watching exactly what the replay yeah. official was watching in the booth, and it was just inconclusive. So Joe Novak, that makes him feel a little bit better as his team continues this march just before halftime. That's a huge, this could be a huge play for Northern Illinois to keep this drive alive if they can come away with, for them, wanting seven or three. Montel Clanton in the backfield and now in motion. Nicholson over the middle. Justin Anderson skids down to the 17-yard line. Let's go to the studio with Mike Leeson. Well, Doug, Sam Kello now the quarterback of Nebraska and sitting on top of Nevada. Oops, I tell you, will we have another giant go down? Jonathan Amaya takes this 80 yards to the house. And score. 10-7, <laughs> Nevada on top, Doug. All right, he's pretty quick. Not as quick as the flash, Steve Israel, but who is, right? Clanton again. Up the middle. You know, last year I was doing studio work. Steve Israel told me he ran a 4-3. Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. You think so? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> and look at this line pushing the ball, pushing off and really getting that Iowa guys get pushed back. This is where Northern has to capitalize. 36% last year on third down. And you've got to figure Iowa's going to come with some kind of pressure, some kind of linebacker dog, where you got one of those linebackers stepping in there trying to create some havoc. Third down, Nicholson. Looks left all the way. Overshoots Brandon Beal. Yeah, that's the hardest throw in football to, to, to throw. I mean, it's the hardest one to, to put out there. Matt Simon is running over, and he's running away from the quarterback, and he's just trying to get it out to him. Charles coming up at halftime. Mike and the gang, Mays and Blues, if you haven't heard, wait till halftime. Emotional day in Blacksburg, Virginia, and the Gators start defense of their title. Mendick on now from 33. And this time he connects. Missed in the first quarter. Gets the Huskies on the board in the second quarter. It's 13 to three. 
Gentlemen, we'd like to thank our viewers on Time Warner Cable. Here's a look at some of the programming that you'll uh, have the opportunity to see on ESPNU. 562 live events, high school and college sports, 15 NCAA championships, and of course our outstanding studio work. Nobody does it better. I, I really had fun in our hotel room watching the U. I did too. I did too. And, and you know, the thing about it, you're going to see Steve Israel and Tim McKayer. So all of you guys with the 49ers will remember those great days that they had. All right. So Northern Illinois is on the board here at Sold Out Soldier Field. And what a great scene. Home of the Chicago Bears. And Charles, I know you were down on the field, and I could, I could sense that uh, you were breaking a sweat. I, I was. I mean, you wanted to get back in there, didn't you? <laughs> it's game day. And whenever game day comes, you, you want to grab the football. You want to just be around and make sure you're able to play. I brought this out, though, because the tip of the ball is where those receivers have to pay attention to and make sure they make plays. There's the kick. Iowa fields it right at the goal line. And they'll get it out to the 14 with just under three minutes to play. We'll see if Jay Christensen can uh, get it going. Again, Doug Bell along with Charles Arbuckle, the man who started UCLA. And he could still play, still won't fumble that football. Well, this is the first game of the season. We talk about ball security. We've seen it out a few times, and that's where I got the eagle claw. I want to make sure I have it. Also, receivers not looking at the tip to make sure they catch the football effectively. Iowa had a lot of drop passes early on. Northern Illinois put the ball on the ground a few times, even though it didn't go away. That's slick. That's how you get yeah, In the first game of the year, they usually have a slick football because they come right out of the box. And that is a brand new football. Christensen now. Oh, that was a slick move. Albert Young takes the handoff. Nice fake by Jake Christensen. Yeah, well, Northern Illinois did it earlier, just that last drive, to fake the ball. But watch Drake, Jake Christensen. Good fake, and then just gets back there, carries out his executed play, and that slows down some of those defenders in the back. But Albert Young is really starting to get comfortable. Can't give enough love to the offensive lineman up front. Raphael Eubanks, we talked about him. Travis Mead getting the start today. Kyle Calloway as well. First and 10. Still lots of time. Albert Young putting up some pretty good numbers now in his first game. Christensen with all day. Oh, wide open. Great grab by Moiaki, the tight end. The junior who Kirk Ferentz really expects to have a big time season. Well, he's also a Chicago land area kid. Good ball handling. You see him moving the ball around to get it to the seam where he wants to get comfortable, Jake Christensen, and then he gets the ball down the field. This is why I like Jake Christensen. His ability to move around in the pocket. Watch. He can create plays with his feet and arm. First and ten. Still lots of time. More than two minutes. Christensen. Over the middle, dangerous pass to James Cleveland that was broken up. Alex Kuba was there for Northern Illinois. I, I really like Kuba. Well, I can see why the coaches <laughs> like this kid. James Cleveland took a shot, and that's one of those plays where you come back to the huddle and you say, Jay, <laughs> my boy, please don't hang me out the dry, because Alex Kuba's back there. This ball sails on him. That's one of those shots. Listen. Oh, man. And see, James Cleveland is hurt a little bit, but he got a show. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> and there's Cleveland making a nice grab. Going forward for three yards. Back to the studio, Mike Gleason. Illinois, Missouri, the annual battle. Ron Zook trying to get things going. Juice Williams out, so Eddie McGee tries to score, and he, he coughs it up. Pig Brown. Is he going to go 100 yards, maybe 101 for the touchdown? And he it, does. He takes it to the house. It's, it's definitely a fumble. He's he's in for the touchdown. They went for two. They didn't get it. 13-6. Mizzou. Wow. Doug. What, a, what a play, huh? <laughs> Unbelievable. What a play for Mizzou, Illinois. A big game for those two teams. And Missouri expecting to have a really solid season. And obviously, Illinois, uh, with all those great recruiting classes, looking to turn around things as well. In this area, you get an update on all the teams, and Juice Williams is getting a chance to open the season and start, and they're expecting him to be much more effective at the quarterback position for Illinois. There's Joe Novak. Excited now where the program is. Excited that the Jordan Center has opened 
in the end zone at the football stadium. And retirement came into the conversation the other day when we were talking to Joe Novak. I hope that doesn't happen anytime soon. In and out of the hands. The Moyaki dropped that one. You know, this is the one thing we talked about on our conference call with Ken O'Keefe. You, know, you guys had a lot of drops last year, and they did. Plays like this. Tony Moyaki makes a great grab earlier, and then this ball hits him right in the hands. The best place, and he drops it. Those are the things that with some of these young receivers, and even he is a young receiver playing behind Scott Chandler, must do a better job of helping the quarterback. Donahue on. They kick it away for the Hawkeyes. Greg Turner is deep for Northern Illinois. Turner lets it bounce. And it's going to take an Iowa bounce inside the 10 down to the 9. And with 134 to play, Northern Illinois will probably play conservative football. Lots coming up tonight on ESPNU. 7 o'clock, it's Purdue and Toledo. We go to the SWAC at 10 Eastern, Texas Southern and Prairie View A&M. Saturday primetime college football presented by City on ESPNU. Well, the folks in the Houston area know Texas Southern and Prairie View, that's a big matchup. Prairie View A&M has gotten a lot better. And if you, if you want to say who's the team that really started some of these knockoffs in the Big Ten, remember Toledo a few years back in the Glass Bowl, you know, really doing a good job and going to Penn State and winning the ball game. So it's first and ten inside the ten. Over the middle, that's the Montel Clanton. You said they were going to be a little conservative. They look like they're going to throw the football. Nicholson, a very accurate passer. You see his numbers today. Good numbers. Did throw that one interception, really forced it in there. And he throws again the dump off to Clanton again. Klinkenborg is right there for another tackle. At 129 tackles a year ago. Doug, it's a smart time to do this also, to give yourself a chance to, you know, play your two-minute offense early in the year. You've been going against each other in, in, in camp, fall camp, and now you got a chance to see some live action against different opponents. Timeout, Northern Illinois. With 103, it'll be third down and four when they come back out. We talked about Klinkenborg, a young man who uh, has decided uh, he and Whitney Bruns will be married June the 6th of 08. Okay. He's making the plunge. <laughs> of course, they've been going out a long time. He's a terrific story, Klinkenborg. Beloved by Iowa Hawkeyes fans. They love the kid, and why not? He's most underrated on that front seven. They talk about everybody else, but Klinkenborg probably is like that glue to that defense. I mean, he's really, Madison is great, Iwo Beam is great, but number 40 is the heart and soul of that defense also. So it's third down. Nicholson, oh, dangerous pass. Wow. Brandon Davis was the intended receiver, but that was almost picked up. And, and Brandon Davis, when he was releasing, A.J. Eads grabbed him, and they let him go, and I thought they were going to call a, a holding penalty, 49. You can see on your screen a, just a little bit. He takes a shot by Iwabima. Ooh. Down the field, though, early on, Brandon Davis was being held by A.J. Eads, and I thought the officials were going to throw a flag because he was running straight down the field to try to get open for Dan Nicholson. Now, Iowa has plenty of time to get in field goal range. Rodell is at the 50-yard line. Nindick now punting with Dick Benner on the bench. After the injury, Rodell gets wrestled down at the 39. Still 45 seconds to play. Good play by Chad Spann. He's the other young running back that we may see a freshman walk on. Good play by Spann. Jay Christensen now. Let's see what he can do. With 45 seconds and a timeout to go. Let's see if they can get in range for Austin Signor, the new kicker. They're showing blitz Northern Illinois. Now they back off. Nope. Brandon Bice drops back. They rush only three. Albert Young. 
gets up to the 44. Northern usually has that blitz package, but right here they want to keep everything in front. Rush three, keep eight guys back. Now, if they start driving Iowa does, then you may see pressure. That's procedure on the Hawkeyes. Out to Brodell, but that'll go back. Stop the clock, and they'll move it back five. Receivers were moving. <laughs> they had people moving everywhere. It's the first game. It's always in the first game when you're trying to work out those kinks. This is a good opportunity for Christensen. Hasn't done really well so far, but with 45 seconds at a timeout, you're thinking maybe he get field goal range. He'll learn from this. He struggled some with his accuracy, but he's also had some uh, receivers not really catching the ball. Offense, five yards, trigger spot, repeat. We're done. Some very catchable passes that they should have had and let those go right through their hands. And Larry English, we haven't talked a lot about him, but you can see on his right knee he has it with the brace on it, not as effective as he can normally be because 51 red, one of those fast rushers off the edge. So Iowa calls timeout. Ken O'Keefe will talk it over with his young quarterback. Christensen, just a sophomore. And it's amazing when you look at all the Chicago kids on the Northern Illinois roster. There's a bunch on the Iowa roster. And for these kids getting a chance to play yeah. where the Bears play, I mean, this, this is special. Christensen, Moyaki. Dace Richardson, who's out today, offensive lineman. Some, you know, there's others on the on the defense as well. But what you, I tell you, the other thing you talk about too, is just really Christensen getting a comfort zone today. And Soldier Field renovated in 03, and it's modeled in that Greco-Roman architecture. That's on the outside with the columns, and it's kind of neat. But the inside is is ultra modern. It's like a flying saucer. that they're kind of stuck inside all the old architecture. We go there! We go there! Christensen has his man flag down on the play. That's James Cleveland. But a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. I think he was past the line of scrimmage when he released it. Yeah, the official that dropped the flag was right there, the line judge making that call, and he throws it in. The other thing with Jake Christensen is his dad, Jeff Christensen, has played in the NFL with Cincy, Philly, and Cleveland. So he has some ability to talk to his dad at home Philly about some of those things. Pass. Passer was beyond the line of scrimmage. Five yards, previous spot, loss of down, third down. We'll show you here on the replay, Jay Christensen, the ball is at the 42. And I talk about his escapability, but right here is probably one of those situations with only three down linemen run the football. Look how much room he has there. He still tries to throw it, gets past the line of scrimmage. So they'll just take a knee and go into the locker room with that 13 to three cushion. Hawkeyes look good in the second quarter. Slow start, but they got it together. She's wearing a pink Iowa shirt. She's happy. They're all happy. Hawkeyes by 10. Let's go to Mike Gleason. What sports are you? Thanks, Doug. The big shocker in college football, and it happened in the big house. The maize and blue. All blue. Up 7 nothing. Then they saw that mountaineer from Appalachian State. That speed. Edwards to Dexter Jackson. You know, Dexter Jackson is showing that he has a lot of speed, too. He ran away from those defenders. 68 yards, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Second quarter now. Hans Badachan, nine yards. He finds the end zone. They're tied at 14. Absolutely. And the App State are believing that they can beat Michigan. Here comes Jackson. Illegal screen. Nah, they're not going to call that. 21 yards, 21-14. He had a lot of space. Edwards. Hey, I'll run it in. That guy, I'm telling you, when he was with Michigan, they had to account for this guy's speed because he could beat you with his hand or his leg. 28-14. Here comes Mike Hart. Now he's already got a touchdown. Here's his second. And uh, they missed the two-point conversion. Fourth quarter, Chad Henney flushed from the pocket, trying to make something happen, and he's picked. You know that's a cardinal sin, throwing off your back foot, across your body, across field. How often do we see the interception by Leonard Love? Steve, it's called football one-on-one. -on -one. He flunked that game. <laughs> hey, here comes Mike Hart. He says, hey, I'm a Heisman candidate. He's rumbling, stumbling. He's going after the record. He, he wants to pass the atrium in one game. Well, not really. Needed 700 yards, but gets 54 here. It's 32-31. Again, they missed the two-point conversion. Guys, the thing I don't understand about that guy, where was Mike Hart in the first half? He disappeared. He was on the bike. I think he had a hammy. How about Coco Hillary? 25 yards down to the five-yard line. Sense of urgency 
level for Michigan was very low in that play. All right, what do you do? Okay, you kick it. No, let's go. They go. Let's let's just play some football. You know, Mike, that's what they had. Michigan all day. App State had them confused, had them worried, had them concerned about all kind of things, and they just gave these guys an opportunity to go out here and get a win. 32, 34. Appalachian State, Henny. Mario Manningham, it's not over yet. 47 yards down to the 20 yard line. It's a great catch by Manningham. Great concentration. Oh my gosh, Jason Gingell. Remember Garrett Rivas, the four year starter, graduated, and it's blocked. Corey Lynch picks it up, rumbles down to the 10 yard line. It doesn't matter because time has expired. It is over. Over, folks, Appalachian State knocking off the Wolverines in Michigan to open up the 2007 season. Michigan expected to win the Big Ten. They go down 34 to 32. Mike Hart says, hey, guys, we assure you we did not take Appalachian State lightly. Everyone else might overlook them. We knew they were a great team. We knew they had a lot of great team speed. You know, uh, they were definitely, they're probably one of the fastest teams we've played since I've been here. A lot of great team speed. You saw the corners running with our receivers. You know, the, the, their receivers running fast. Um, you know, I don't think I don't think we played as well as we could have. But uh, it doesn't matter. They come out. They played a great game. We just uh, made made too many mistakes. Didn't capitalize on uh, at times we needed to. Um, you know, gave up big plays. And uh, you know, they, they they played better than us today. We just simply made too many mistakes. Had too many penalties and too many missed opportunities and so now we have to uh, fight back and uh, uh, we've got uh, to deal with some adversity we'll find out uh, what we're made of well they certainly will keep in mind Hart and long came back to make a run a possible run of the national championship at least beat ohio state and win a bowl i guess still do that but uh, they didn't beat Appalachian State the two time defending national champions in the championship subdivision formerly known as one double A that's the first time a school formerly one double A the football championship division beat a one A team from the bowl division at least a bowl team that was ranked. Wow. You know, it seemed like Michigan, they couldn't handle the speed in the first half. They did make some adjustments. They came back, took the lead, but they still couldn't handle App State when, the, when it counted. No, they couldn't. And I'm telling you, Mike, this was a huge, huge victory for App State. And these guys, you know, hats off to them. These guys came into this game saying, look, we're a two-time national champion. We have a chip on our shoulders, and we can play with these guys. And the longer they stayed around, the longer they felt comfortable, and they knocked Michigan in the mouth. They did an outstanding job. So what will Michigan do? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, this is what they have to do. Let's face it, this is the third loss in a row. They lost Ohio State. They got smacked around by USC in the bowl game, and now to App State. You have to start somewhere. It's the beginning of the season. Let's start with this. One play at a time. Number two, defense, run to the ball. Did you see App State? They ran to the ball every play. And number three, the new slogan for Michigan now, learn how to finish. They must finish games. Okay, so it's a black guy. They still have the Big Ten. Do they respond? Do they win the Big Ten championship? That, this loss is going to do one, uh, uh, one or another thing to these guys. It is going to galvanize this football team to get them to come together or polarize this football team. They're either going to say, hey, look, we made that. That never happened. They're going to have to have what I say, Stephen, you know, it's called cornerback mentality where you have to forget. absolutely forget this. App. Did we just lose the App State? So these guys really have to overcome that loss. It's either going to do one thing or the other, either make this team great or they're going to just be getting beat all year long. Well, I'll tell you what, Michigan opens 0-1, uh, and today was a day to celebrate uh, another season at Virginia Tech, also a day to remember. Remember the fallen, the students from that senseless shooting spree in Blacksburg back in April. The FIFA Under-17 World Cup continues through September 9th on ESPNU. Hus Huskers. No. Huskers with a, with a Z? No. Ooh, a uh, husk guy. Take him. How about with that heart, hus, heart, cur, no. Brasky guy, brasky pants, brasky man. Bet nobody's, nope. somebody's got that. You know what, I'm, I need to go write some more and I'll, I'll be back. Oh, wait, 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 excuse me, excuse me. Uh, how about Nebraska? Sorry, dude, uh, Nebraska. Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. All right, boys. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Running out of that tunnel. Unbelievable. With the season coming to an end, don't miss another day. Oh! 
In the Summer House. Well, that was definitely an experience just to look around the stadium. Summer House, Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Presented by Under Armour. This is Joe Novak. On behalf of Northern Illinois University and the Mid-American Conference, I want to thank you for being a part of NCAA football. As coaches and players, we compete to win, but we compete within the rules of the game, and we ask that you do the same by being great fans and by demonstrating good sportsmanship. Good sportsmanship epitomizes the competitive experience for all who support college football. Let's make this game a memorable and enjoyable experience for everyone. Make it a great day for NCAA football. Thank you, and enjoy the game. No. 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 What? It had a virus. The computer's not the problem, Mr. Tucker. It's your network. With Verizon high-speed internet, you'd have a dedicated line and automatic security updates every three hours to keep viruses out. You could also get firewall and spyware protection. Hmm. Step up to Verizon high-speed internet for one low price. When you do, you can add the most advanced security protection available for just a few dollars more. Get internet service 20 times faster than dial-up, plus the unsurpassed protection of the Verizon Internet Security Suite, all on the network you know and trust. You giving rides? Not today. The speed you need, the security you deserve, all on a dedicated line. Order Verizon high-speed internet for one low price and get the Verizon Internet Security Suite for just a few dollars more. Visit us online for an even better offer or call 1-866-730-9361 now. Verizon, it's the network. Hey, welcome back to our Sports Center U halftime report. We go up to Blacksburg uh, for Virginia Tech as the Hokies hope their team can help ease some pain from last April's shootings and senseless loss of life. Frank Beamer leading his team into the stadium for a pregame ceremony. We will never forget and we will always honor the memory of those taken from us too soon and those who are still recovering from that day. So Beamer and the Hokies taking on the Pirates of East Carolina. Not a good start for Virginia Tech. The fans uh, saw the very first play from scrimmage. They dropped back, and Sean Glennon had those four turnovers in the bowl game. Well, he's picked by Pierre Bell. Not a great start for Sean Glennon. You know, we talked during the offseason about this offense needing him to pick up his game to take some of the pressure off Brandon Orr. But then what does the star of their offense do? He puts the ball on the carpet. Come Jeff. on, Steve. When you got a great defense like Virginia Tech, you can afford a fumble. Or two. Well, Chris Johnson <laughs> capitalizes 7-3 uh, East Carolina on top. Second quarter, same score. And uh, Frank Beamer relies on the defense because the offense ain't getting it done. Victor Harris. Victor. Mancho. They call him the Mancho man. He shows why. He's Mancho with big plays in the end zone for the touchdown. Oh, he's a, sorry, he's a cornerback, but I tell you one thing, he made a big play on that one. 10-7. Here comes Glennon now. This time he goes up top, finds his tight end Sam Wheeler for the touch. That's what we need from Glennon. We need some touchdowns out of this guy because we know we play great defense. So come on, Glennon. Help us out, please. Well, he had that one INT, but he uh, passed for 245 yards. You see there, uh, 22 of 33. Brandon Orr had the fumble. 23 for 70 yards. The most importantly, Virginia Tech with LSU on the horizon wins it 17-7. Uh, and Glennon, the quarterback of the Hokies, uh, talked about today after the game. I guess we didn't live up to expectations of what we thought we were going to do. We thought we were going to come out here and ride on all the emotion of the stadium, just, you know, come out here and, and put on a show. And we struggled early on. We really did. And uh, our hats are off to ECU. They were, they were quite an opponent. But uh, luckily, you know, we got together in the second half and pulled it out. Well, I, I think it was a great win, uh, Mike. I mean, you're talking about Virginia Tech. They had to go out there with, um, and they got LSU next week. These guys got to play defense, and LSU will match them with their defense, too. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough game for them next week. LSU, Bo Pelini bringing his high-power defense in there. Sean Glennon's really going to have to pick it up. But you know what? Expected large dose from Brandon Orr, and it's going to be a defensive battle. So tuck this one in into the uh, category, a win is a win is a win. But Virginia Tech LSU coming up next weekend. We're at Soldier Field in Chicago. It's the half. The uh, Hawkeyes on top of the Huskies by 10. Hirachi 2K4, only at Big Sporting Goods. 
I've got Mike Joyner here, MVP of today's Donahue Baxter wedding. Mike, quite a performance. Yeah, well, it was a team effort. Without that block from Sully, I would have never been able to watch a Chicago-St. Louis game cast. We saw there was a lot of talk between you and Sully. Care to comment? <laughs> oh, yeah, he just told me to hang in there and do what I got to do, you know? <laughs> Thank you, All right. Mike. <laughs> Live from the Donahue Baxter wedding, back to you in studio. Be an ESPN MVP, only with VCast, fantasy management, baseball tonight clips, live game casts, and more with ESPN MVP, exclusively from Verizon Wireless. NIU, serving the heart of America's heartland. Educating new leaders for the nation's third largest region. Bringing expertise and innovation to communities and public schools. Creating new jobs and new workers. Conducting research that improves our quality of life. Northern Illinois University. Across the region, from Chicago to the Mississippi, NIU works. The Rudy game, 1975, Georgia Tech. Uh, they lost 14-10 to the Irish. Uh, they've had this one circled for a while. They probably thought they should have won last last year, right? Definitely. Georgia Tech comes in with that John Tenuta defense and a very, very top tailback in the country. Also, Tassar Choice looking for Tyler, Taylor Bennett to pick it up. It's 5 11 for 71 yards right now. How about the defending champs? Florida down in the swamp against Western Kentucky. Third straight year, the Hilltoppers open against the SEC champions. First quarter, Florida up 7-0. Riley Cooper, 59 yards from the southpaw, Tim Tebow. I guess he can throw it, huh? Yes, he can. Everybody thinks he's just a running quarterback, but Tebow can put the ball in the air, and he's leading this Florida team to a national championship again, at least it's on his mind. I mean, he's doing a really good job so far. Tebow to Harvin, 21-0. Riley Cooper, 42 yards from Tebow. Again, another touchdown. He's tossing touchdown passes like candy. Camp Randall, Wisconsin, Washington State. Uh, first quarter, no score. Washington State first and goal. Dwight Tandy, nine yards. Turns the left corner. Bam, he's in. It's 7-0 Cougars at Camp Randall. Here comes Chris Ivory. Four yards out. Game tied at seven. Not anymore. 14-7. Hey, what's going on with the Badgers? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we got them tough in the Big Ten right now. It may be overlooking Washington State, but Washington State's put them in the game. But I guarantee you, they'll be stepping it up here he, pretty soon. D.J. Hill scores, and then Donovan to Gary Graham. Touchdown. And there we go. The Badgers starting to roll now up into Camp Randall. It's 27-14, Wisconsin on top. Youngstown State, Jim Trestle's old stopping grounds. Down in Columbus in the horseshoe. New quarterback, Todd Beckman. Dana Sansenbanker. Sansenbanker for a touchdown. It's 7 0. Uh, Chris Wells now gets the score, and it's 14 0. Buckeyes are rolling a little different than that Appalachian State Michigan game. Absolutely. Youngstown side will bounce back from that Florida defeat in the national championship game. Here's Wells with the spin. He's got the spotlight this year, of course, leads to a field goal. Fourth quarter, backup quarter, back Antonio Hinton, 37 yards to Torian Washington for the score. 38-6, all Buckeyes today in Columbus, Western Michigan, West Virginia. And, of course, as usual, it's all Pat White and Steve Slayton. What do you know? Heisman candidate to Heisman candidate. Steve Slayton's turning on the turbo jets. He's fast, but he's not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Slayton got his touchdown, so here comes Pat White. It's his turn. Absolutely. I saw him make this play. The thing I like about this guy, he's having fun out there. Watch him direct track. You get him, you get him, I'll get, and I'll just take it on in the end zone for the touchdown. Slayton's touchdown was 50. That one goes 39. It's 28-14. Mountaineers on top. UCLA, Stanford at Jim Harbaugh's coaching debut, or the head coaching debut at Stanford, at least. First quarter, Ben Olsen. Southpaw to Joe Cowan. Touchdown, Bruins. Great grab by Cowan. You see how he concentrated, kept his eye on the ball, went over the defender for the touchdown. And Olsen, uh, boy, nice loft there to Gavin Ketchum. Hunts 14-0 UCLA. It's 14-7. Bruins on top of Stanford. Hey, Steven, that looked like a push to me, but <laughs> <laughs> Albert Young gets a push for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He scores. They're up by 10 on Northern Illinois. How do you recognize a prestigious university? They're the ones that have earned distinction for academic excellence. They're known for having rigorous standards and for professors who are tops in their field. Great schools expect only the best from their students and deliver nothing but their best to the world. The University of Iowa offers students a world-class education. For over 160 years, we've earned our place among America's great schools. The University of Iowa, be remarkable. If you owe taxes or are facing an IRS lien or wage garnishment, here's important news for you. 
Now there's a new program that will immediately end wage garnishments, remove IRS liens, and eliminate IRS tax penalties. Call right now to enroll in the Rapid Relief Program from Advantage Tax Resolution and have your tax liabilities reduced by up to 90%. Hi, I'm Corbin Bernson for Advantage Tax Resolution. You know, tax problems can strike at any time, even if you've done nothing wrong. Advantage Tax Resolution was founded to help people just like you resolve your tax problems permanently. I'd never been able to take on the IRS myself, but I got help. I had my tax lien removed and my debt reduced 90%. Call right now to enroll in the new Rapid Relief Tax Resolution Program. It's the last call you'll need to make about your taxes. There's no better time to remove wage garnishments or eliminate tax liens and penalties. Call 1-800-598-7167 right now. At noon today, we kick things off from the Orange Bowl. Randy Shannon, his coaching debut as the head coach of the Hurricanes. Miami, defense, setting the tone. Setting the tone. We knew they would be a good defense. Randy Shannon was a defense coordinator there last year. DeMaris the good in 32 yards. Uh, Greg Cooper, well, he's got some wheels, huh? 56 yards here. Down to the 18-yard line. 115 yards, 11 carries for Cooper. And then here's Edron James, uh, little cousin, Javaris James, the sophomore. Javaris looked real good, real shifty hit as he gets in for the touchdown here. Okay, the ACC wasting no time getting things revved up in conference play. Wake and BC. Alfonso Smith, I'll let you guys hear the cornerback. Take it away. Absolutely. It reminds me of my rookie year in San Francisco. <laughs> Went about 22 yards on the pick. Alfonso pretty excited about that play. Wake up 7-0. Uh, Riley Skinner down to Kenneth Moore for the touchdown. It's 14-0 Wake. You know, Matt Ryan's picking up where he left off as the leading passer in ACC. Look at him going down, Phil. Great catch here by Clarence Megua. Okay, Boston College 14-14. It's 21-14. Here comes Ryan again. Here's Megua with the touchdown. little tip drill there. Tied at 21. They've got a good one going in the ACC. Brandon Meyer from the southpaw. Boom, turns. Lunges into the touch. 13-3 Hawkeyes on top. How long has you been up there? I don't know. I think a while. You all right, Mike? College football lives here on ESPN. And to see it all, you need the ESPN Game Plan Pay-Per-View Package. With key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, you'll get up to 12 extra games every Saturday. Order now and you'll be all set for a full season of great college football with ESPN Game Plan. ESPN Game Plan presented by Olivia. Just $129 for a limited time. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Games also available on ESPN360.com. This is Mid-American Conference Football. Success on the field. Success in the classroom. Success in life. Back football, 60 years of success. start presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. That gentleman's happy and so are those folks. They're Hawkeyes on top 13 to 3. Here's Soldier Field in Chicago. Doug Bell alongside Charles Arbuckle on a gorgeous Saturday for football. Charles, this weather is just perfect. Doug, I was out at 8 o'clock this morning just walking on the lake and it was, I mean, it was picture perfect, man. I mean, people were out with their dogs. They were out getting ready for the jazz festival around here. It was just outstanding. It has been outstanding. Now, last year in Iowa City, remember, Iowa jumped out to that 17-0 halftime lead, similar to today's game. And in the fourth quarter, Northern Illinois rallies and almost won the thing. Well, if you're Northern, you're happy. You're getting the ball. You went in at halftime only down by 10. So what that allows you to have the same mindset. Hey, fellas, we were here. 
It was only 17 points. This time it's 10. Let's pick it up and let's go make some plays in the second half. Evans Adonis deep for Northern Illinois. Young man from Miami, Florida, Southwest High School. Made his way up to DeKalb, Illinois. Kicking for Iowa is Austin Signor. Adonis fields it at the 15. Whoa, boy, you heard that up here. That was a lick. Hey, if you weren't ready to play, you are now after that hit. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Jordan Bernstein, he delivered a blow. Wow. With a flag down uh, offsides against Iowa, and they will have the Hawkeyes re-kick. Offsides, number four of the kicking team. Five yards will re-kick. From the 25. Watch the stick here, Charles. Murphy here. just delivers a blow. Ooh! Oh. Man. <laughs> that, you know, and that's what happens when you hesitate on a on a return and you kind of stop. That just allows the <laughs> the coverage team to come down and just blast you. That was a shot. Well done, but they'll have to re-kick this time from the 25. So Northern should get a good return. Again, Greg Turner is deep. Jamie, Jamie Murphy on that play. Not even listed on our. Our sheet, but hey, he's, he wants to be reckoned with after that play. Special teams, red shirt coaches freshman. will tell you much more important now. That's how you make. That's how you make your ball flow. This will be a short kick. Turner field to the 16. Check that. That's Perez. Marcus Perez brings it up to the 32, and once again the Huskies with good field position. Here's what it looked like in the first half. Andy Brodell for Iowa, second quarter. Big time punt return. Shows off some of that track speed. I'm trying to set, you see I'm trying to set up? <laughs> oh, but this is where it really gets good because you give the ball to Albert Young and he's able to really look, flex a little muscle. <laughs> and then you come outside with Damian Tins. Bad fit by Alex Kuba and Sam's able to get outside. Young guy, redshirt freshman, and he gets beat on this touchdown. He hesitates just enough to allow Myers to get outside of him and catch that football for six. Hawkeyes okay, missed the extra point on the first touchdown, so it's 13 to three. Nicholson, lots of time over the middle. Uh oh, that was not a good decision. Marcus Perez was the intended receiver, but that was double coverage. As you look at the numbers, Iowa second quarter went to the running game, and it really paid off. Brought to you by Oxy, our first half statistics. Well, Iowa, they wanted a balanced attack, and early on they were really throwing the football, and in that second quarter they started running it. On the other side, Northern Illinois, they really don't have a choice. They can't run against this front seven. They have to throw the football. Montel Clinton. Takes the handoff, flag down on the play. Check that, no flag. Yeah, that was a nice run by Clanton. And, and the reason why, Doug, he didn't waste any time. Really was effective in running up the field. You see Nicholson with a lot of passes and the completion is good, but one interception. And Clanton now with 27 yards rushing, but he has to run behind his pads with this Iowa defense. They are too strong and too quick for you to just hesitate and make moves in the backfield. Third down and two. Behind that big offensive line, Nicholson rolls out, and he should run for it. Boy, he gets nailed out of bounds. That's a late hit. Well, that'll be an extra 15. A.J. Eads. And <laughs> you know what happened? Nicholson hesitated. He took... Into the long. play. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Number 49. Good block right yards. there by Automatic Clint. first down. I think he was still on the field, but you know, that's a when you start your dive from where AJ Eads is, I don't like that call. And I'm an offensive-minded guy, but watch where he dives. If you stop the camera, watch right there. He's still in play. And once you start diving, there's nothing you can do as a defender. You have to go and make the play. Crowd watching it on the huge scoreboards here at Soldier Field, and they obviously didn't like it either. It was a great hustle play by A.J. Eads, but he was, you know, clearly out of bounds. 
First down. Deep, wide open. Hard, Greg Turner. Inside the three-yard line. I like that play. I really do, Doug, because you have a, a big 15-yard pickup, and now you come with a, a play that Iowa has attacked you up front. And then you just take the ball down the field. What did I say about it? You're only down by 10. Last year it was 17. Here they come. That was a 40-yard pickup. Watch the defense. They all are cognizant of something going on, but not quite sure. But the safeties don't get back far enough. And Greg Turner makes a nice adjustment on the ball. Now, we talked about Dan Nicholson being able to throw. That was a very nice throw. Great catch by Greg Turner. Brandon Davis lined up at fullback. Planted at tailback. Flag down. Movement before the snap. Rid Davis was in motion. I think Ball he start. Offense. Number 83. Five yards. The down remains first. It was Reed Cunningham who was lined up against Kenny Iwabima. He was concerned about Big 92 bringing the rush. Now, this is where you hurt yourself. You get to the one. Watch 83 right here on your screen to the right. Tight end right there. See that yep. little flinch? And Iwabima saw it. The line judge sees that right there. He's looking down there. Good. Good look by the camera angle that show you. It's just that little hesitation, that flinch. I've done that before. God, I hate it. <laughs> I hate when that happens to a tight end because we're exposed with that line judge out there. First and goal from the eight. That end goes nowhere. Devin Boylan grabs him around the knees. Well, see, that's where you hurt yourself. You get that nice drive, you get down to the yard, one yard line, two yard line, then you have this to happen to you. This Iowa defense is tough, and Justin Anderson taking way too long to be decisive in his move. And now look at these Iowa guys get off blocks. Look at Iwabima locked up, moving off. I mean, they all just come after you. Mike Humphrey, they're all in there just making plays. Devin Moylan was the one, though. Second and goal, Nicholson. Charles Godfrey in a nice position. Ball is tipped up in the air by the receiver. See, Northern Illinois really wanted to run this football. There's pressure there coming up the middle. And look right there, Charles Godfrey in position to make the play. Well, you got down line, but not picking up their assignment. Anton Nurinsky is able to get around and make the move, and that's what forced him to throw the ball earlier than he wanted to. So Iowa takes over after a huge interception. Jake Christensen, handoff. Albert Young, first forward, and gets a first down. Ten-yard pickup, Albert Young. Well, they're running on either side now. And that side, Seth Olsen and Julian Vandervelle. Vandervelle is a renaissance man. Sang at the Alamo Bowl talent show last year. Did you see the numbers getting better for Christensen there at the bottom and Albert Young really being effective? But he sang all I asked him. You would think he'd sing a rap song, but he ended up singing something from the Phantom of the Opera. And everybody gave him a standing ovation. First and 10 from the 39. Albert Young. You can hear some popping going on. The one thing you tell young offensive linemen or tight ends, you got to stay on your block. We just talked about Julian Vandervelle. He was one of those guys from the backside of that running play, 63. It was effective because he stayed on his block and just kept pushing the foul. Albert Young decided to cut it back, and there was a hole there. We're at Soldier Field, Chicago. Iowa, Northern Illinois, biggest home crowd to ever see a MAC conference game. Sold out today. Doug Bell along with Charles Arbuckle. Damian Sims in there now, up the middle. Offensive line for Iowa, no seniors. They're known for that zone blocking scheme. And I like what I see, especially in the center, 
Eubanks, he's active. Well, he's a Remington Trophy watch list guy. So they put people on this Dave Remington award list in the very beginning. He's one of them as a sophomore. Now, he's effective. Centers have to make the call. They have to do everything else. Watch him here. He's going to pick out where's the linebacker. I'm telling you where the linebacker is, okay? That's where the blitz comes from. That's where we got a hot read for. He has to snap the ball. Over the middle, dangerous pass. Ernie Moyaki was the intended receiver, but again, Christensen really forced it in there. Well, Moyaki never really looked back. He was still running the route, and the ball got there kind of hot. But he should have been looking because Mitt Christensen knew, I got to get this one to you quick on a third and four. Coach Ferris looking into the sun. The visitors have the sun side here at Soldier Field. Northern Illinois, the home team on the shade side. That's the big punter now, Ryan Donahue. Greg Turner fields it at the 15. Gets it up to the 20. Iowa maintaining that 10-point cushion here in the third quarter on a sunny... Hello. Getting Jason warming up. Excuse me? Come on, guys. Quit playing games. Keep Bobby up right, right I now. I think you got the wrong number. What? Who is this? Dude, you called me, all right? Hey, I don't know what you... Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. All right, boys. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Running out of that tunnel. Unbelievable. With the season coming to an end, don't miss another day. Oh. In the summer house. Well, that was definitely an experience just to look around the stadium. Summer house. Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Presented by Oxy Acting Solutions. Hey, I see the light. Who out there wants to be healed? You, young man, bring me that hideous face of yours. Let me lay my hands on you. Let the evil acne bacteria be gone. Bam! Oh, oh he has been healed. Hooray, Oxy! My brother calls me Murphy's Law. Oh! On September 21st, <laughs> falling in love with her is easy. Cam's the one man. Not getting hurt could be a problem. I'm sorry. Good luck, Chuck. Rated R. September 21st. The guys in my league said he was too small, buried on the depth chart, but I snagged him off waivers anyway. And 16 touchdowns later, I'm holding this. Ladies and gentlemen, a giant on my team and in my heart, Maurice Jones Drew. Looking for this year's fantasy heroes? Okay, relax, man. Get the best expert advice and analysis at ESPN. Sign up and play for free today at ESPN.com. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Iowa leads Northern Illinois 13-3. And the man who uh, was one of the big reasons uh, this game's being played here, Jim Phillips, uh, the athletic director of Northern Illinois, joins us now. Jim, it's all come together. Your team's losing, but on the good side, this is this is a big-time event. Just a spectacular day in Chicago and a wonderful yeah. event for the fans and our alums and our student-athletes. Uh, you cannot put a value on what this means to play in the city of Chicago in a world-class facility in a tremendous city and to have this kind of show and just represent I think everything that's right about college football. All right there's a completed pass for the Huskies. Nicholson trying to march him back down the field. First to go from the three. Uh, I know that hurt you down there hurt, didn't you? That, that pain me. I, <laughs> that, that, that's, that, that shuttered to my heart a few, few beats there. But I'm proud of our kids and I'm proud of our effort. As you guys have described throughout the broadcast, we have a young group, especially on the offensive side of the football. But they're learning, they're growing. They'll be better from this experience down the road. Jim, how does this help you recruiting? Yeah, I know you like Chicago. This is an area where you guys get a lot of kids from. How is this going to help you recruit the Chicago area? It, it, It'll help us a great deal, Charles. We have 72 kids from the state of Illinois on our roster. We're a regional institution. We're, we're, we're not like a University of Notre Dame or UCLA uh, where you can go nationwide and recruit student athletes. We spend a lot of time right in this city, in the suburbs, and in this region. And so that's going to only help us. Kids, kids dream around here is to play at Soldier Field where the home of the Bears are. So this can do nothing but help us in the future. This is good stuff. Third and six now, Jim. Let's see what... Dan can do. Nobody in the backfield. 
Plant goes in the slot. Lots of noise. And he'll come up short. I have to ask you about the new athletic complex. Uh, what a beautiful facility, uh, the Jordan Center. I saw it last year when it was just being built, Jim. It's finished now, finally. It's tremendous, and both of you guys can really appreciate. You must reinvest in your infrastructure. You must reinvest in your student athletes and coaches, and that that's what this has allowed us to do. We spent nearly $15 million to build a 62,000 square foot facility, the very best academic center, computers, tutorial lounge, study area, the very best weight room we could find anywhere in the country, academic and athletic center that also had a uh, tough punt there, but uh, Flag down, roughing the kicker. Nindick is now kicking after the injury to Ditbender in the first quarter. And it looks like, uh, no, they're calling it against Northern Illinois. A hold against the Huskies is the initial call. So again, Jim, I hate to bring you up when things like this are happening, right. but. They're part of college football. Still part of the young time. Team. Right, right, right. But, but back to that facility, offense. you know, to have a, a sports medicine and rehabilitation center First to care for every one of your 486 uh, pro, uh, t uh, student athletes and 17 programs means an awful lot. It's beautiful. Yeah, really, people should be envious of that. Absolutely. Great facility. We hope it'll be a great recruiting tool, but not only a recruiting tool, when the student athletes on our campus, let them train optimally, academically, as well as athletically. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks very much. Jim, Thanks thank for being you. here. Take very care. Much. All right. Jim Phillips, the athletic director at Northern Illinois, and I know he's excited about that. So is Joe Novak, although right now Coach Novak is a little hot. Oh, Things man. aren't going his way. He can't believe they called the holding penalty. Iowa now with terrific field position from the 49. Christensen gets off. Damian Sims right up the middle. Big gain. 17 yards. Mark Reeder saves the touchdown. Boy, I like that play right up the gut. Well, the first game of the year, you should run the ball if your defense, like Northern Illinois, is small. But also, too, they get tired here. They haven't played a, a live game. And look at this move. Just good blocking up front. But Damian Simmons is able to find a hole that Northern Illinois defense is getting tired. They've been on the field a lot longer than they should be. First and 10 from the 35. Christensen over the middle. Great grab, James Cleveland. Down to the 17. Well, and, and now you see the open spaces that Christensen can throw to. Cleveland is a, a, is a young guy, red shirt freshman, but it, they really like him at Iowa. You, know, you talk to Ken, Ken O'Keefe and those guys, they just say he's going to be such a big player for us. He just needs to get in there and make plays. And look at this throw by Christensen. I mean, he fired the ball in there. And move the chains. Well, the Iowa offensive line, no seniors. Coach Ferentz said uh, we're a work in progress, but boy, they have looked good today. Let's give credit to Reese Morgan, the O-line coach. You know, the coach Ferentz also. Sure. He's one of those guys that that's what he coached in the NFL, and he knows a lot about offensive line play. But he even said, it, this may be a tough, tough start for us because Northern, they bring a lot of pressure. Larry English, he comes off the ball very well. It'll be second down and 12 as you look at Kirk Ferentz shading his eyes from the sun, looking right into the sun as it sets behind the press box side of Soldier Field. The sky boxes are behind Coach Ferentz. And there's a bunch of them. Complete looking for James Cleveland. Oh. Eyes off the football. You know, you got to catch that football. You can see the two different angles there. Big difference. Dark side <laughs> and the bright side. And for Iowa, even though they're in the sun side, things are looking awfully bright for the Hawkeyes in this season opener. It's third and 12. Christensen will work from the shotgun. Damian Sims lines up to his right. With time. And he throws it out of bounds. Larry English 
just had him corralled, and so he had to throw it out of bounds. Well, a good move by Christensen to getting away at the last possible second. You can see Larry English clearly doesn't have his full burst there. But this is why Jay Christensen is a much better fit for this Iowa offense. Watch. He's always looking down the field, and he's looking to throw the football. But watch this little move. Okay. I'm, okay, I don't have anything. Let me get rid of it. Save the day. Austin Signor on for the field goal of 37 yards. A late arrival in there. Kyle Callaway. Flag down. Well, Kyle wasn't sure where to line up. <laughs> and he, he missed the kick. The kick was wide right. Boy, that was ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he doesn't know. Okay, I can't go there. Hold on, let me get in here. <laughs> Illegal ship. Offense number 60, the penalty is declined. <laughs> Definitely. The point is no good. First down, Northern Illinois. But, but hey, look at what the drop does, though. James Cleveland on second down drops the ball, makes a third and long, and still doesn't have a chance to get that field goal. Kirk Ferentz talking it over with Donahue. Not good. The FIFA Under-17 World Cup continues through September 9th on ESPNU. Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Oh. Summer house, Tuesdays at 9. Nike Hirachi 2K4, only at Big Sporting Goods. What about last quarter? Sales? Yeah. 4.6 million. Is that gross or not? I was not. I bet you get a nice bonus. That's what's good. Again, that's very impressive. You know what? Those numbers are very different. Hey, get off my car. Thank you. Uh, can I get you anything else? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Get free one-on-one -on -one financial guidance at every Citibank branch. Personalized to help you turn your dreams into realities. Come to City and let's get it done. It's the comedy that's highbrow. This place is really cool. Yeah, if you like hanging out with pretentious posers. Can I have a tall soy macchiato and a cranberry biscotti? Lowbrow. Come on, man. These ladies aren't going to make sweet love to themselves, are they? Or are they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and protruding brow. Don't. Ever. Goodbye. Caveman, just like you and me, only hairier. Premieres Tuesday, October 2nd on ABC. ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate, is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. In City, let's get it done. Trails by 10. Dan Nicholson tries to bring him back now. Lots of time. Six minutes plus third quarter. That goes incomplete. Looking for Brandon Davis. The Hawkeyes defense has been really good today. Well, Norm Parker said he wanted his guys to play like they had a chip on their shoulder. And you can see the physical nature of the front seven. And this guy smashing, hitting hard. That's good. That's what Iowa defense, they want to put the imprint there. Look at Jamie Murphy with a nice stick as well. Norm Parker has been around a long time. Ninth year defensive coordinator for the Hawkeyes. There's a completed pass to the outside, Reed Cunningham. Coach Parker, great friends with uh, Joe Novak, the head coach of Northern Illinois. And he told us the other day, hey, it's too hot. Let's not even play this game. Let's just go fishing instead. <laughs> and they were on the field talking before the game. Probably about going fishing. They've been together a long time, and I think if, if you gave Joe the option right now, he'd say, yeah, let's go fishing. It has been a long day here at Soldier Field. A lot of good things happening for Northern Illinois playing here, but the scoreboard is not looking good. That almost was picked off again by Charles Godfrey. 
Matt Simon was the receiver, but Godfrey was right there. Every time they have a chance to make a play, it just things just discombobulate. And right here, Nicholson throws the ball too far down the field, and that allows Devin Moylan to come in and be the over-the-top guy and break that up, with Godfrey knowing that he has deep help. Nindick on to punt. Dick Benner injured earlier today. Andy Brodell deep. Brodell fields it at the 38. Looking for that wall. And he gets nailed up at the 44. Good field position for the Hawkeyes. They lead by 10, trying to fill on that when we come back. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Link's jerky. Feed your wild side. Soccer's future legends in a quest for World Cup glory. The FIFA Under-17 World Cup. Coverage from Korea continues through September 9th on ESPNU. When you want to buy great products at the lowest prices you've ever seen, just turn to your computer. Satisfaction guaranteed. Every day low prices and free shipping and Google checkout is preferred. Next time you're gonna shop online, just remember these keywords. Buy.com, oh yeah, buy.com. Code Red, need to hide. You again. Hey, where can I compare auto insurance prices at this hour? Easy. Get your insurance quote, compare prices from other companies instantly online. I save hundreds. You'll save time, too. Quote, buy, buy print. print. Not much compares with the convenience of insurance. I gotta fly. If you're on the go, you gotta have insurance. Compare and save on auto insurance. Visit insurance.com today. We told you about the special relationship between Joe Novak, the head man in Northern Illinois, and Norm Parker, the longtime defensive coordinator at Iowa. And it goes all the way back when they worked in 1978 on Gary Moeller's staff for the Fighting Illini. And check that out. Bob Sutton on staff and the guy in the back row, Lloyd Carr. <laughs> Isn't that something? And thanks to the Sports Information Department at the University of Illinois for getting us that photo. Of course, now they've moved on. Norm is here. Lloyd licking his wounds after losing to App State today. Joe Novak and Bob Sutton, long time with Army, and Bob's bounced around now, the defensive coordinator with the New York Jets. Pretty good staff back in 78, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They didn't last long at Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> but, and uh, every, all the other ones will blame each other for why they're not there. Wasn't the coaching. <laughs> It was the horses on the field. Second down and four. Intercepted, no, in and out of the hands of Bradley Pruitt. Let's get an update now from Mike Gleason in the Sports Center U studio. West Virginia, Western Michigan, Tim McCarr, here comes Steve Slayton again. Can somebody say Heisman? Can somebody say Heisman? Steve Slayton bolting through that offensive line to score. 58 yard touchdown for the score. 35 14, Mountaineers, Doug. All right, Glee. Not a surprise there. In fact, uh, I live in Alabama, Charles, and Patrick White, I followed him in high school. Uh, man, he, he was uh, special in high school. Still special. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and the schools around Alabama didn't want to recruit him as a quarterback. Rich Rodriguez, good for him. There's the first down and more. Tony Moyaki snares it. Mark Reeder with a tackle. We're live from Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. Packed house. It's a sellout. In fact, it's the largest crowd to ever see a home game in the MAC Conference. Northern Illinois and the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Iowa has never lost to Northern Illinois. 
And Doug Bell alongside former UCLA star Charles Arbuckle. Great blocking up front. Albert Young. Getting close to 100 yards. 94 yards now for Young. Well, he's finding those holes and they're really opening up areas for him, both he and Damian Sims, to really get in there and, and make some things happen. I mean, it's just the, the line has ju just done such a good job after they settled down and got Jake Christensen to not throw as wildly as he was and just ran the football. Second down and three. That's the eye formation. Albert Young running behind the fullback, Tom Bush. Great push up front. Let's get back to the studio, Mike Gleason. And Nebraska starting to open up some breathing room on Nevada. Is. You know, Brandon Jackson is gone. Now it's the Marlin Lucky Show. Takes the handoff from Sam Keller, goes around the left side. Looks like a relatively easy touchdown for Mr. Lucky. He's over 100, 28-10. Huskers on top, Doug. All right, I think Albert Young is now over 100 by a whopping uh, margin. 112 yards, 17 carries. Terrific game for him. Watch the big guys up front doing a nice job. Christensen on the outside. Moiaki. Just shy of the first down. That's Kuba, Alex Kuba on the stop. And you can see now they want to get Moiaki outside because there's so much presence and focus on uh, Clanton and, you know, I mean, so much on Young and Sims inside. He's a Mackey Award watch guy. Yeah, he played in the shadow of Scott Chandler. And Coach Ferentz really thinks of all the guys in the offense, he's the guy who could really emerge as a superstar this season. 11 catches last year, three touchdowns. Second down and two. Young again. Gets a first down for the Hawkeyes. You see big number 63, Julian Vanderbilt out there. Now he's a redshirt freshman. And Charles, when he was 12 years old, his Little League World Series team made it to the championship game. He was a first baseman, 12 years old, 6'2", 220 pounds. That's, that's a big 12-year-old. Another title that he has, he's a cheese fry champion. Like when they bring recruits in, he ate the most cheese fries, so he goes <laughs> take all the recruits to the same location to see who can eat the most cheese fries. Yeah, he volunteers. Coach, you need somebody to show these guys around? I'll take it. Into the end zone, looking for Brodell. And that's the thing they said he needs to work on, the fade. Yeah. That, that pass there was was really offline. You usually throw it to the pylon, and that's where Brodell was running. And there's the offensive line. No seniors. I mean, the future really looks is looking out for this Iowa front, and they look pretty good today. I think Eubanks is a guy you, you need that center, and he's shown us a lot today. We've seen Vanderbilt move for a big man, has nice feet. Trapsies. Rodell. That's why I'm holding this football. Because that's one of those things. Every time they're not looking the ball in, and they just think, I have it, I'm going to catch it. They did this last year. The one thing that they were inefficient and they worked on all camp was catching the football. Look at him turning his head before he goes. You can't. The eyes have to go to the ball in order to catch the football. All right, so Brodell with the drop. He's had a solid game today, one of his few mistakes. It's third down and 10. Christensen with lots of time. Brodell stretches it out, gets down to the four. He's shy of the first down by two yards. It'll bring up fourth down, and it looks like the field goal team is coming on. Here comes Austin Signor. Well, we talked about the drops, but they also are without Dominique Douglas, who had 49 receptions last year. And Brodell is now the go-to guy. Kyle Schlicker was the kicker a year ago, and Peter Rama, the assistant uh, soccer coach and assistant football coach at Ankeny High School, kind of tutored both Schlicker and this kid, Austin Signor. And he, this time he drills it. From 22 yards, I want top 16-3. Back to the studio. Glee, what you got? 
Back in the studio, Sports Center. You in-game update. Ben Olson having a good day for UCLA. It's the eighth receiver. He's hit. He is hit number 19. Dominique Johnson for the touchdown pass. He's spreading the wealth. 21-7. Chase Daniel had that great year last year for Missouri. Goes upstairs. Jeremy Macklin touchdown 30-13 Missouri. And here comes West Virginia's. Pat White said, look, Steve, you can't have all the fun. Now he <laughs> takes one in. They may end up having to saw the Heisman in half, guys. They're certainly trading off, aren't they? 42-14, Mountaineers on top of the Broncos. Back to Soldier Field. Hey, how would that work? How, how's it going to work, though? <laughs> Steve said that saw the Heisman in half. I don't know. <laughs> That's never been done before. Tonight, Purdue Toledo, 7 o'clock on ESPNU. And then it's the SWAC, Texas Southern. Prairie View A&M, Saturday primetime college football presented by City on ESPNU. That's coming up. It has been a busy day on ESPNU. Excited. The cable system here, Time Warner in Chicago, proudly displaying the U. Watched it last night and this morning. Fielded at the five. And Perez goes down, tripped up. Special teams shaky at times, but other times they're spectacular for Iowa. Well, they made some plays, and Brodell was one to start that off when he got that long punt return. But their coverage team, this half, has just been outstanding. Johnson and Murphy, another shoot. Murphy had the big hit, and Johnson just made the tackle. A lot of teams now playing their better players because the kickoff has been moved back five yards. Instead of walk ons and other guys seeing action, they're playing some of the better guys. And what they do is they cipher, decipher that out in non-conference games as well. They play some of the young guys, but they also want to play their starters as well. Northern Illinois, Montel Clan. You know, Clan averaged eight and a half yards a carry last year before he went down. He, it was early in the year, but this guy's got this guy's got skills. He can play, but the one thing that I think he shows is what Garrett Wolf did is Garrett Wolf was more decisive than where he was going to go. Clanton sometimes is feeling his way through as opposed to running with the same intensity and purpose that Garrett Wolf did. But he's gone now, so you have to work through those uh, Clanton and Justin Anderson. Garrett Wolf has made the Chicago Bears roster. Play will play right here at Soldier Field. Dangerous pass. Batted down by Humple. Gary Wolf. Last year. What an outstanding player he was. Short in stature, but just really effective. I mean, when he decided to go, he was able to just take the ball up the field. And he ran well behind his pads. He, he often reminds me, when I watch him on tape, of Joe Morris. The old New York Giants running back. And we will talk to Garrett Wolf, the All-American. Just a couple of minutes here on ESPNU. That was batted down at the line of scrimmage by Mitch King. We talked about King early, and his motor's still running. Four more. <laughs> Doesn't stop. Uh, but that's what you do. You get these guys, and you put some weight on them. Good. Get that weight room workout. Look, he still shows some athleticism. Hey, I used to play some hoop. I'm going to tell you guys. That's what he's going off the sideline to do. But great job of knowing I can't get to the quarterback. I'm going to put my hands up. Rodell has been very busy. He's deep for the Hawkeyes. Did Benner will punt from his own five-yard line. A low liner gets over the head of Rodell, but he makes a nice grab. Works his way up. Wow, nice gain up to the 49-yard line for Brodell. That was over the shoulder of Willie Mays, huh? Well, was he at Wrigley Field or Soldier Field? I mean, <laughs> that looked good. Nice yeah, very good athleticism there. Just watch the catch here. I mean, over, over the, the shoulder, shoulder yeah. and then takes it back up. And why I like Brodell as a returner, he doesn't hesitate and waste time. If you're blocking for this kind of guy, you give him a seam, and he's shown you that he can return the ball effectively. That was Vic Works with that ball that Willie Mays ran back. Ty Cool is our producer. He's great, all over that old time baseball stuff. Great, huh? great recall. Yeah. First and ten. Damian Sims. Struck down at the five-yard line. Flag down back at the 32. Yeah, we talked about decisiveness. The flag is there, but I still like Sims. Damian Sims deciding to run the football. When he gets to a point, he turns it up the field. 
even though it was a hole, watch the running back. And he gets right here, boom. And then when he goes, no one's there to touch him because he knows I've run. passed that already. 81 offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Tony Moyaki on the end there. But I, I just, when you talk about running backs really being effective, that's, that's where you don't hesitate. You just decide to go. And when you do, you're there. 47-yard gain nullified on the hold. Oyaki was out in front of the play, blocking a defensive back, and had just latched on. Yeah. Sometimes that's called, sometimes that's not. Might be the last play of the third quarter. Damian Sims cuts back on the left side. And that will end the third period on the first down run by Damian Sims. That's the end of the third quarter. Expect more of that in the fourth quarter as the Hawkeyes. Great defense, opportunistic play, lots of enthusiasm, great moves. They're on top. Heading to the... Take a share in the Summer House, Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Dad, we need a new fridge. This one's old. You think? Yeah. And what's up with the cabinets? And these lights? We need to go to Home Depot. Right now, get no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases store-wide of $2.99 or more through Monday with your Home Depot consumer credit card. Plus, now through Wednesday, get 10% off appliances. Go Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Maybe your car is trying to tell you something. Maybe it's asking for the hard-working gasoline at Phillips 66, gas specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks, which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. Give your car what it's asking for. Give it Phillips 66. Hard-working gas. As we grow older, one of the greatest challenges we face is being able to hold on to our independence while still being able to get assistance when we need it. Hello, I'm Lee Merriweather, and if you live alone, I urge you to look into the Alert USA Personal Emergency Response System. With this system, if you ever fall or otherwise require assistance, simply press the button on your pendant and you'll be connected to an operator at our monitoring station who can summon help 24 hours a day. And while you may have seen similar products advertised on television before, Alert USA is one of the most advanced systems on the market today, yet it's very affordable. So remain independent while remaining safe with Alert USA. To find out more, call today for a free brochure. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-0101. For a limited time, get the Alert USA system for just 50 cents a day. Call now, 1-800-652-0101. I'm Danica Patrick, IndyCar driver and GoDaddy girl. I know a little bit about speed, so take it from me. If you want a fast way to make a name for yourself on the internet, GoDaddy has everything you need. GoDaddy got me online fast, and they can do the same for you. Dot com names as low as $1.99. When you have something to say, say it at GoDaddy.com. Welcome back, Soldier Field Chicago, presented by Allstate. Iowa leads Northern Illinois 16 to 3. And now perhaps the most famous member of the Huskies, uh, the former All-American Garrett Wolf, now a member of the Chicago Bears, joins us. Garrett, how are you, my man? It's, uh, it's great to be here. Good to I'm see you. Very happy to be here. You made the Bears. This is exciting stuff for you. Your alma mater's playing yeah. here at Soldier Field. This is, this is exciting for you, isn't it? That's a great game for the university. Uh, you know, to be able to come out here and, and have a game like this in a venue uh, like Soldier Field, and a historic place, and also state of the art. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the university. Christensen to the outside, incomplete, or to bring up second down. Uh, Garrett, Garrett, the one key thing I, I mean I want to ask you is, what has it been the difference from college to the pros? We hear a lot of guys talk about it. I said I wasn't gonna let this ball go, but you're <laughs> running back. I gotta put it in your hands and tell me why you're talking about it. Get you in the comfort zone. Well, the the one major difference is the mental aspect of the game. Uh, you know, in college, you know, there may not be as many high.
hot reads or dual reads or, you know, picking up the protection off two guys, whereas in the NFL, you know, everything's about creating a mismatch. And you know, if, you're, if they're bringing one guy to the field, you know, we want to get a guy open over there. we got to be aware of what's going on. Iowa stays on the ground over the right side. And again, Albert Young just continues to churn up yardage behind that uh, good offensive line. How has it helped having Michael Turner as a guy mm -hmm. that you come behind to help you with that transition? Uh, well, Michael Turner's been great. Uh, it was great having an opportunity to play with him at Northern Illinois. Uh, it's most definitely been a positive influence along with a uh, former running back and my former coach, Thomas Hammond, who's now the running back coach at Minnesota, and also my former running back coach, DeAndre Smith. I I've been fortunate enough to have great men and, and great role models to help lead the way and help show me how to do things right. Here, let's watch this third down play and let's see if Northern Illinois can get a stop and get the ball back. As we just start the fourth quarter. And that's a nice play now. Northern Illinois will get the ball back. Let's look at the Garrett Wolf resume. Pretty impressive stuff. Uh, look at those numbers. Of course, that's first all time Northern Illinois history. Player of the year in the MAC in 2006. Drafted third round by the Bears. That's good stuff for a guy who they said, hey, you're too small, you'll never play D1. Too small, you'll never play in the NFL. Uh, you made all those guys wrong, didn't you, Gary? Uh, thus far, I've been able to get the last laugh uh, at, at each level. And, uh, you know, at the end of my career, hopefully that's 10 years from now, I, I love to have the last laugh at this level as well. Boy, you had a great college career. It was so much fun uh, calling your games. There's the punt now. That is going to be down. Right at the five yard line. Hey, before we let you go, tell us about the shirt. That's some good looking, <laughs> good looking stuff there. Well, it's a shirt that I picked up in uh, in California while I was out at the rookie premiere. I was able to do some shopping, and uh, well, things are a little different now. I, I can buy some nice things for myself. You don't, you don't get those in DeKalb, Illinois. <laughs> oh no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Gear, thanks. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You for me. I appreciate it. On all your Thank success. You Thank you good well. stuff. Gear Wolf, the All-American from Northern Illinois, watching his Huskies, hoping for a comeback here, and it's a sellout crowd. Good stuff here at Soldier Field. I tell you, Charles, it's been fun today, hasn't it? It really has. I mean, the atmosphere, and just, you know, so much going on today. Northern Illinois had some opportunities. Let's see what they can do on offense now. Completion up to the 10 yard line. Let's go to the studio now with Mike Leeson. All right. Slow start for Matt Ryan, throws the pick, but talk about coming back. You know what, Mike, I said earlier that Matt Ryan was heating up. Well, guess what? He's hot. He hits Brandon Robinson in the end zone for the touchdown. Four touchdowns. How about the Cougars closing the gap? Hey, we got a ball game now. Letting Wisconsin know, hey, it's not going to be easy. Nice touchdown from Alex Brinks to Brandon Gibson. 28-21, Doug. All right, Glee will keep up to date on that. Uh, some interesting games on this first Saturday in college football, needless to say. First down for Northern Illinois, Montel Clanton. He looks like Gary Wolf there busting through, huh? <laughs> well, you know, you talk about Michael Turner, who's now at San Diego, Thomas Hammock. Before him, he, you know, Garrett talked about running back coach. These young guys have a lot to, to, to step into. And it'll be interesting to see by the season and by the max schedule who really takes the lead and who really wants this position. 12 carries, 49 yards for Clanton. You know, standing next to Garrett Wolf, you realize how small he really is, Charles. You know, he, he's got great vision. And he makes people miss because he's a little man and now playing for Lovey Smith and the Chicago Bears. Completed pass to the outside. Reed Cunningham. Another first down for Northern Illinois. But look how Garrett took the football, got come, he put it in a lock <laughs> position, and then he used it as a point of emphasis. It gets people comfortable. This little pigskin, 22 guys going for it, but only a few select can hold it. And Reed Cunningham right there is one of them, getting a chance to catch the football, look it in, turn up the field, and get the first down. My man Charles Arbuckles held this football the whole game. He's never let it go. First and 10. And again, great hustle there up front. That's Klinkenborg in there along with Kroll, Matt Kroll. 26 straight starts now for Kroll. Time ticking away. Certainly on the side of Iowa. been a sloppy game for Northern Illinois. A lot of new faces, including their quarterback, Dan Nicholson, who did play at the end of the season. And he goes down. There's a sack. Iwebama 
Kenny Webema, his first sack of the year. He's had a solid performance. Let's find out about Charles Arbuckle's UCLA Bruins. Mike Gleason. Oh, well, here comes Ben Olsen. He's having a big game, too, for the UCLA Bruins. Well, we said he was spreading the web. Here he is for hooking up for a 77-yard touchdown pass. Outstanding job by Olsen today, Nick. Three touchdowns for him, 28-10. Back here at Soldier Field. Wide open. Clanton gets a couple back. Humple is right there. You see Dan Nicholson limping off the field. He's taking a lot of shots. And you see how long it took for Clanton to get going. I mean, he made about three or four moves, and that's one of the things they're going to work on. Dan Nicholson took a shot to play before by Kenny Wabima. There's the Huskies mascot, and he needs he needs some pain relief. He needs an aspirin. It's been a frustrating day for all the Husky supporters. Nindic with a kick. Rodell wiggles out of one tackler. Flag down. Anthony Mason finally brought him down. We'll see if they grab the face mask. Possibly a block in the back. A lot of bodies flying during that melee. You know, you talked about it. The first game is where you see all these penalties. And during the return, illegal block in the back, number 30 of the returning team, 10 yards, first down. And Doug, a lot of it comes from just not being in that live action. We'll be back as we finish things up at Soldier Field in just a moment. Are you one of the millions of people who think you just can't learn a second language? The problem isn't that you can't learn. It's that you've been using the wrong method. Well, thanks to our breakthrough software called Rosetta Stone, learning a new language is now incredibly easy and a whole lot faster. I probably learned more in the first two weeks than I have in months of taking formal classes. Unlike traditional methods that require hours of tedious translation and memorization, with Rosetta Stone, you're actively engaged in each lesson. From the very beginning, you'll see real-life images and hear native speakers. El caballo está saltando. This powerful combination teaches you to think in a new language, not memorize, so speaking comes naturally. You learn far more easily and more quickly. I've used a lot of different mediums, the books, uh, the tapes, um, and it just, bar none, it's, it's the best one that I've ever used. I was one of those people who thought they could not learn a language, and I needed to learn a language for my job, so I needed to learn Spanish. And I learned Spanish quickly, and I did it through Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone is so fast and effective, it's used by the U.S. State Department, NASA, the FBI, and top Fortune 500 companies, and is the world's leading language learning software. It's almost like having your own person there teaching you, your own private tutor, who is just very relaxed in your home with you, sitting there teaching you the language. Rosetta Stone is the fastest way to learn a new language. And to prove it, we'll send you our amazing demo CD absolutely free when you call. There's no obligation to buy. Right away, you'll see for yourself just how fast and easy it is to learn a new language with Rosetta Stone. This really is a great program. I believe that you can learn any language with this program. If you're serious about learning a language, there's no easier way to do it than with Rosetta Stone. Call the number on your screen now and see for yourself why Rosetta Stone is the fastest way to learn a language, guaranteed. Hawkeyes on top 16-3. Some famous alumni are back. Bob Sanders wearing that Super Bowl ring of the Indianapolis Colts. Looking a lot like Bob Marley, huh? How about Dallas Clark? Well, you got two key components of that Super Bowl team. And when the Colts really got on that run, Dallas Clark was healthy. And then in the playoffs, Bob Sanders really came on and made plays for him. The workhorse, Albert Young, surges forward for five more. Well, you know, he's, he's the rhythm there now and this offensive line, it, it takes them a little while. But once they finally get people playing, what they also like to do at Iowa, Reese Morgan wants to have guys in position so they have, they have to play other places. So Callaway may move in the left guard sometimes. Travis Mead has moved over to the right guard. They're trying to get them comfortable playing different positions in case they're in the injuries. Six more for Robert Young. And he gets 10 more and still going strong. 
that leg drive. And, you know, that's the part of the power I talked about, the ESP. Explosion is one when you make the sights of cut. Speed is what it is, speed. But look at the power here. Okay, he makes the, makes the move, and then when he gets inside, that's the power of a great running back. You take the V for, for granted for most good running backs' vision. But look at this. Nice cut. I show you some speed, but look at the power now. This is old Earl Campbell style. Growing up in Houston, you know, if you didn't have a love your blue flag going, that was a run. Rem reminiscence of Earl Campbell right there. I mean, look at him. Just powerful. Now Damien Sims, the one-two punch. Another first down for Sims. Boy, give that offensive line credit. Let's check in on the Oregon Ducks. What's happening, Mike Gleason? Well, Doug Bell, Dennis Dixon's baseball days are over for the time being. Back on the football field is. Yeah, Dennis Dixon finds his big target, Jason Williams. And guess what, Michigan? Guess who's coming to dinner next week? Dennis Dixon, Jonathan Stewart, Jason Williams. Well, you know what? Houston comes right back, though. Cuts it to seven. Uh, Keenan to Aldrich. There they go. The Cougars, 34-27 once he finds the end zone. Back to Soldier Field. A lot of offense, not a lot of defense in that one, huh? <laughs> Kevin Cobb is now gone from Houston, but they still look like they can score points. Hey, we should sell Steve Israel, who you heard there in the cut-in back in the studio. Carl Jackson, the running backs coach at Iowa. Shout out to Steve Israel. He tracked us down yesterday during the walkthrough and said, hey, Steve Israel called me a couple weeks ago. Be sure to tell him. Thank you, and hello. And the funny part to that, Carl Jackson recruited me coming out of high school. So before the game, I was talking to him, and he did remind me again to tell Steve hello. Yeah, Carl was the running backs coach with the 49ers when Steve played with the 49ers out in the, out in the West Coast. You guys are all connected. It's amazing, this fraternity. Coaches, players. There's a draw. Damian Sims. Nice stiff arm. 34. That was a great play right there. Damian Sims with that jackhammer of a stiff arm at the end. Hey, let's bring in the flash, Steve Israel. Hey, Izzy, Carl Jackson says hello. <laughs> hey, guys, I lived across the street from Carl when I played for the Niners. He's a great coach, but you know what? You make sure you tell Coach Sims he's the only one that didn't call me back yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said yesterday. Yeah. He said, Steve left me a message telling him I was thinking about him. He's been busy. <laughs> he is, what can I tell you? They're preparing for this opener. Good penetration up front for Northern Illinois. Corey Hansen was in there. There he is, 26. Well, and, and, you know, this is his 22nd year at Iowa. This is Carl Jackson. He had two stints here. Great play right there by Corey Hansen, who was going to start today. But with Tim McCarthy coming back, he took that position over. Second and 11 now. Jake Christensen has gone the distance. Only his second start. Both have been against Northern Illinois. Young, in fact, Christensen is the only player in Division One where his first two starts have been against the same team. <laughs> well, the other thing with, with Christensen, you can see that now that Iowa has a, a strong running game, you have two running backs that will have over 100 yards. If Damian Sim gets back in, he had 93 after his last carry. But that's what's going to help him get comfortable as well. This is a balanced attack that they want to have. And if they can get the running game going like they have today, they won't be able to run for over two, 300 yards every game. But if they can get something, this will help him. Yes! time. Looks for Brandon Myers, the backup tied in. Let's check back in now to find out what's going on with Wake Forest. Well, Matt Ryan. Uh... He's having a heck of a day for BC. He sure is. Co tossed a career high, five touchdown passes, making it real tough for Wake Forest. Wake Forest, Riley Skinner's gone with a separated shoulder, 35-21, Doug. It's tough to go to Boston College. I mean, it really is. That's a difficult place to play. They play some good yeah. football there, and if you don't come with your big boy pads on, they'll bring you. And the crowd is right on top of you there. Really are. It goes down in a heap. 
Boy, you name a player, they were all there. Alex Crutch, Larry English, Tim McCarthy. That slowed down the surge temporarily. Christensen waited, and they got swallowed up, but the Hawkeyes still up by 13. We've left the most treasured game in the world to be played in the shadows, where its speed, power, and passion have remained unseen. Now, a new stage is set, with new stars bringing light that soccer's time has come. in a quest for World Cup glory. The FIFA Under-17 World Cup. Coverage from Korea continues through September 9th on ESPNU. Dish Network Pay-Per-View presents $1.99 movies only on the Last Chance Channel. I think there's, there's some stuff in the basement. What basement? Here. This movie's available for a limited time. Order it now before it's gone for good. It's over. Ain't nothing over till it's over. Where's that from? The 80s? That's probably the 70s. Go to channel 538, the last chance channel, where $1.99 delivers the greatest movies from Dish Network pay-per-view. Hello, my name is United States Senator Ken Salazar from the state of Colorado. Every two years, we choose our leaders in the great tradition of our American democracy. We vote. Whether you are voting for mayor, governor, congressional representative, senator, or next year, President of the United States, your vote is your voice. When you vote, you speak on education, national defense, and many other things that impact the way you live. But when you do not vote, you lose your voice in our democracy. Use your voice. Vote. You're watching ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate. That kid, uh, he means business, huh? <laughs> Ready to go. Nicholson to the outside. Brandon Myers shoved out of bounds. Let's check out the running backs now for both Iowa and Northern Illinois, two teams that like to run the football. We told you about Northern Illinois trying to find the replacement for Garrett Wolf. Obviously, Albert Young is healthy again. Wow, Charles, big time. Yeah, major difference, and that's what gives your offense a chance to really get in position and make plays. Think about Northern Illinois not able to run on that play when they got down to the three-yard line. Because of that, you can see the difference. And also, Iowa able to just really run the ball down the field. Matt Simon snares that one from Nicholson. Doug, we know they can make plays against this Iowa defense, and if they can get the ball down the field, score quickly, that'll put the score at 16-10. Justin Anderson in there now behind Nicholson. Three-step drop to the outside. Let's go to the studio right now. Well, Doug, the Oregon Ducks are on the move, and uh, Dennis Dixon's at the controls. You know, that's why it makes him so special. He's a double threat. You just saw him throw a touchdown pass to Jason Williams. Now he's taking it 80-plus yards on the ground. Dennis Dixon in for the score. 41-27, Ducks on top, Doug. All right, I like those Oregon uniforms. They're a little more tame than we've seen in the past. I, I can handle those. Some are a little outrageous. Nicholson. He's saying my blocking is outrageous. Mitch King, boy, he was, his motor, Charles, I mean, he never gets tired. Well, part of that is, is Nicholson's fault also, because if you keep going back, right there, you gotta try to step up, and he maybe had a chance, but once he kept going back, you know, sooner or later, Matt Kroll, Mitch King, Kenny Wabima, or Brian Matheson, or all of them will get to you. Well, I like King, a little undersized, maybe at two, 264 pounds, 
But he's quicker than those big 300 pounders that are trying to block him. To the outside. Matt Simon. Well, Charles Godfrey, you're handing out game balls. He's got to get one. Well, and he would get one, and the reason why is not the two picks, but his physical effect from the corner position. Sometimes you see cornerbacks and they turn down making these hits. Watch this. He comes up, good tackle, wrapping up, and he doesn't care. My helmet coming off, but I'm making plays. <laughs> he is making plays. So he, on the defensive side, he would get this ball. I would give, I would give the football up to Charles Godfrey. His senior season looking for a big one, and he's off to a great start. Nine punts now for Northern Illinois. This one goes out of bounds. No return for Brodell. It'll be right at the 20-yard line for the Hawkeyes. 3.23 to play in the fourth quarter. For a girl like her, falling for a guy can be a little dangerous. On September 21st. Not now. Get ready for a shocking good time. Good luck, Chuck. Rated R, September 21st. A new comedy premieres Tuesday, October 2nd on ABC. Start here. Presented by Southwest Airlines, Tennessee versus Cal. Tonight at 8 Eastern, college football lives here. Are you the ultimate sports fan? Verizon and ESPN360.com challenge you to prove it. And the winner will drive off in this tricked out tailgating machine. Plus, 25 grand and bragging rights to prove it. Go to ESPN360.com on Verizon Surround and compete every day to be the king of fandom. And watch thousands of ESPN sporting events live online. Take the King of Fandom Challenge. Log on to verizonsurround.com slash sports today. Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Oh. Summer house, Tuesdays at 9. ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Huskies cheerleaders, they've been smiling the whole game. They haven't turned around to look at the scoreboard, apparently. Huskies are down 16-3. Back to the ground for the Hawkeyes. Damian Sims in there right now. Give Larry English, he continues to play hard. Well, you know, the, the, the biggest thing for the Northern Illinois team, as you can Time see, out. Larry Northern English Illinois. with a little bit of a limp They're in his first. knees. Got to get that healthy, and then they will be more effective. But this is a, you know, for them, looking at last year. Joe Novak calls the timeout tonight. More games coming up on ESPNU. At 7 o'clock, it's Purdue against Toledo. Another Big Ten Mac matchup. 10 Eastern, the SWAC Conference. Texas Southern, Prairie View A&M. Saturday, primetime college football presented by City on ESPNU. Well, the last time Northern Illinois scored three points or less, you got to go back to 1999. September 18th at Iowa, they were shut out 24 0. Well, last year was a, a chance they had a chance to really play Iowa. 17 14 going into fourth quarter and end up losing. But today they, they had opportunities, just couldn't capitalize. Well, Coach Ferentz told us, uh, Jay Christensen, he said he's somewhere between Brad Banks and Drew Tate, <laughs> uh, which was an interesting comment. Iowa fans will probably get a kick out of that. What, what do you think about his performance today? Certainly Tate was the guy who ad-libbed, 
Brought in a lot of energy, did his own thing. Christian's more of a game plan guy. He really is, but he also has a few things to work on, making sure that he just follows through on his throws and, and gets comfortable and has his, have his receivers catch the football. That's part of it today as well. But I think they like him because when, he, when a receiver makes a mistake, he doesn't go over to him and get in his face. And at some point, you may have to, but they, gotta, they all have to work together. They're all young receivers, young quarterback. And they think that offense will be effective because the ground game will be there for them to do more play action pass and get the ball down the field. Those are his numbers 12 of 29. Started out one of seven and really struggled another timeout now for Northern Illinois. And you can add about four or five drops to that number as well. I think if you're an Iowa supporter, though, you have to like that offensive line. Young, no seniors. Northern Illinois is pretty aggressive, and they proud that box. They, they held up good today. And the other thing is you wanted to see how Iowa would respond after losing so many games in a row last year. Even though they played Texas well, Texas really didn't want to be at that game. You know, they, they thought they should be at a BCS game. So this was a good test for Iowa to see how they would come out from last year. Ken O'Keefe talking to his young quarterback. You saw those Iowa fans. Kirk Ferentz will get right back to work. The Iowa fans on this long Labor Day weekend there in Chicago. I think many thousands will stick around and have a good time this weekend. Third down and nine. Sticking to the ground. Ball carried by Damian Sims. Damian Sims. He and Albert Young, timeout both seniors. Northern Illinois, their third final timeout. That's the last timeout for the Huskies, three minutes to play. Very right. good day for I. Points on the board. Right here, Albert Young, very at the very beginning, we talked about that Iowa offensive line and flexing his muscles. And then Brandon Myers with a nice catch on the goal line. Jake Christensen with that nice throw on the five yard out to get him into the end zone. You see the fans there streaming that uh, cool breeze. Although everybody kept saying what a hot day it was in Chicago. I live in the south and man, this is paradise. <laughs> this is beautiful. You couldn't ask for a better day. Mid 80s. Low humidity, a nice breeze that you'd expect off the lake. Northern Illinois up to the 37. That was Greg Turner. It was a great day. It's going to be a gorgeous night here in Chicago. 77 degrees. Check it out. For those of us in the south, I mean, down in Alabama where I live, 100 degrees has just been the norm for about most of the month of August. Same way in Charlotte, North Carolina. Wow. <laughs> just, hasn't been uh, very kind. The Iowa Hawkeyes band enjoying it. We should say that you may notice the field is a bit worn out in the middle, and it's early in the football season. That ball's deflected. But there's a lot, this is a city-owned facility, so last week was a big high school week. A lot of the big high schools played here in Chicago. The Bears played here on Thursday night in an exhibition game. The, the uh, Major League Soccer team plays here. I mean, the surface is not good, Charles. Uh, when you walk down on the field, you're expecting grass, and, and it's not to the degree that this early in the season. Struggled with that here at Soldier Field for a number of years after taking the turf out. Actually, the national soccer team will play here, uh, not the major league soccer team. Their stadium is actually over in Bridgeview. They call it Toyota Park. Pass interference, defense number 49. The penalty is at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. And of course, Charles, I know you're a big fan of the Chicago Fire, <laughs> aren't you? Well, you're just pulling it all out. <laughs> I can just say, I like the fire. I'm bringing the heat <laughs> on this first Saturday in September. Well, we can go to the arena team, the uh, Chicago Rush. They're about the only team that doesn't play here. <laughs> this field is used by a lot of folks. 
And I know yesterday when we had a chance to meet with Coach Ferentz here during their walkthrough, he thought that perhaps they would resod the field before the Bears play in two weeks. He, he said the same thing. Yeah. He, he thought so. And it's a tough place to grow grass because we're so close to the lake and it, it doesn't get a whole lot of that breeze coming in here. It stays up high. Dangerous pass, falls incomplete. Nicholson noticeably limping. He's taking a lot of shots from that active front of Iowa. I'll tell you, in the wintertime, though, if you ever come to this field, you can wear turf shoes on it, even if they reside it or whatever, because it's frozen. <laughs> Dug up just a bit. The Bears play on the road in their opener, so they're not home for two weeks. Two weeks from Sunday, the Bears return to Soldier Field. Interception. Mike Huffle. Tries to stay in bounds and he steps out at the 35. Been a tough afternoon for Dan Nicholson. Well, he's been battered and bruised, and I think that's the exclamation point with Mike Humphrey stepping in front. And Dan Nicholson is not the same quarterback now. He's limping around and he can't really throw the football, but what he does there is push him out just enough. Good hustle by him. You're always taught as the quarterback. If you throw the pick, make sure it's not a pick six. Well, those guys are fired up. I would hate to see it if they won the Big Ten title. Wow. It'd be uncontrollable, those Iowa fans. So back to the ground game now as they try to eat up the final 2-11. Northern Illinois cannot stop the clock. Damian Sims. Gets close to a first down. Inside of two minutes now. Tackled by Tim McCarthy for the Huskies. Oh, just so effective on the ground. And it starts with up front with the lineman. Uh, so many question marks about this Iowa offensive line. And Seth Olsen, Julian Vanderbilt, Raphael Eubanks, Travis Mead, and Kyle Callaway have really been effective. And you see the rushing yards. So if you gave a game ball, if you gave the game ball, you'd have to give it to the offensive lineman as well as the two running backs. Look at those numbers, the rushing numbers. There's a first down for Damian Sims, and I still hear my old friend Gene Stallings from the University of Alabama. He's told me a million times, you gotta stop the run. You, got, you have to run the football, you have to win the giveaway takeaway, and that's what Iowa's done today. They they run it well, they've stuffed Northern, and as far as takeaways, they're leading that charge, plus four. Well, and, and you know, two of them come from Charles Godfrey, who made a nice interception early, and to start the season off that way, you just want to get a win in the books, and Iowa was able to do that with a great running game and good defense also. That front seven, we didn't say enough about them as well. Back in there for Iowa is Javon Pugh, his first carry. Pugh is a freshman out of Naples, Florida, as Iowa has extended their recruiting. Obviously, they've done a nice job down in Florida, up in the New Jersey area. This is a hotbed for Northern and Iowa, this is Chicago. They get down to Texas, and I think what they do is they selectively go after talent in, in certain areas. New Jersey, like you said, is one of them. You know, and wherever guys have spent time and gotten accustomed to building some relationship with the coaches, they're able to really effectively recruit. This should be the final play. Two. Trying to get a first down. And he will come up just shy. And that's the ball game. Kirk Ferentz will come across, shake hands with Joe Novak. Hawkeyes look decent today. Well, Kirk Ferentz was ready to have a game where he could win. He talked about it earlier. Last year, we started so quickly, and we didn't finish the season. This year, they started the season. It'll be interesting how they do the rest of the year. Again, our final score from Soldier Field in Chicago, 16-3 Iowa. Coming up, we'll get you back to our Sports Center U studio for an update of scores around the country. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Charles Arbuckle and the entire ESPN production team, I'm Doug Bell, saying so long from historic Soldier Field in Chicago, where the Hawkeyes are flying high.
So a victory for the Big Ten over the Mac, and coming up, it's uh, Big Ten in the Mac again, Purdue and Toledo. That's Curtis Painter. He broke Drew Brees' single-season record last year by two yards. We'll see him coming up at 7 o'clock. Speaking of the Big Ten, how about Big Ten and Appalachian State and Big Blue, high expectations this year, and they grab a 7-0 lead, but then they see some real speed, guys. Yeah, App State has great skill position players. As you see, the speed separating from the Michigan defenders going in for the touchdown. That's Dexter Jackson going 68 yards. They are tied up at 7-7. It's 14-7. Here comes Edwards now to Hans Badachan. It's 14-14. And the big machine. Well, here it comes. And I'm talking about the big machine. It's App State, not the big blue. Absolutely. Great pick play by App State. These guys came in there and played with an extreme amount of confidence, and they knocked off a giant. That was uh, Jackson scoring. Edwards comes back up and over for the score. It's 28-14. Mountaineers over Michigan in Ann Arbor. Mike Hart starting to get the engine rolling in the second half. Bites his way in for the score. Went for the two-point conversion. Didn't go. Fourth quarter, Chad Henney trying to get something going. Flush from the pocket. And UDBs, what happens? We Cardinals. love quarterbacks that do that kind of <laughs> You cannot stuff. throw on your back <laughs> leg across the grain, across your body. It's going to be an interception 90% of the time. That was Leonard Love. Here comes Mike Hart, who sat a lot on the sidelines in the second half, guys. I never understood that. App State absolutely couldn't do anything with this guy, and he was MIA, seems like. But here he is making a big play on this thing for the touchdown. 54 yards. Michigan takes the lead 32 31. Again, they missed the two point conversion. Edwards rolling, rolling, finds his man. That's Coco Hillary. Oh, man, where's the Michigan? defense. MIA on that play, and I'm telling you, these guys are outstanding. I mean, come on, Steve. When you go out there to Michigan and knock them off, come on. 30 seconds to go, 32-31. They're arguing. Do we kick it or not? Well, you know what? They kick it to Julian Rauch, 34-32. Appalachian State on top, and this ball game's still not over. You know what? Henny has a strong arm, and Mario Manningham is one of the top receivers in the country, and he's showing why here. They're fighting to the end. Oh, down to the 20-yard line. How about Jason Gingell? He's blocked. You know, App State shows why they're the two-time defending national champion and champion uh, subdivision. This is why. They know how to finish. Uh, talk run. about some pressure as Wolverine fans are shocked. Uh, Mentioned Jinjal going out there because Garrett Rivas, he's been kicking for the last 13 years, it seems like, at Michigan. Mike, you talk about an absolute shocker. I mean, you get a team, a 1AA team like App State, to go in there and pull off an upset win like that, it's awesome. Let's take a deep breath here. We see Henny, 19 of 37, 233. How about uh, Edwards up there for 17 of 23, 227, three touchdowns, and Appalachian State wins it. Mike Hart says, you know what, guys, we did not take this team lightly. Everyone else might overlook them. We knew they were a great team. We knew they had a lot of great team speed. You know, uh, they were definitely, they're probably one of the fastest teams we've played since I've been here. They had a lot of great team speed. You saw the corners running with our receivers. You know, the, the, their receivers running fast. Um, you know, I don't, think, I don't think we played as well as we could have. But uh, it doesn't matter. They come out and they played a great game. We just uh, made, made too many mistakes. Didn't capitalize on uh, at times we needed to. Um, you know, gave up big plays. And... Uh, no, they, they, they played better than us today. We just simply made too many mistakes, had too many penalties, and too many missed opportunities. And so now we have to uh, fight back. And uh, uh, we've got uh, to deal with some adversity. We'll find out uh, what we're made of. Well, since 1978, when the NCAA began classifying 1A and 1AA, uh, no 1AA team has ever beaten a ranked 1A team in the AP poll. And you see, as you guys pointed out, two-time defending national champions. And they said they weren't going to back down when they went into Ann Arbor. They were going to put up a fight. I'm not sure if they thought they'd pull out the victory, but uh, they did. Now, keep in mind that Michigan uh, almost ran the table last year, guys. And they lost, uh, well, the last three ball games. Uh, they haven't lost uh, three straight since 1979. Of course, they closed with Ohio State. They closed in the Rose Bowl with a loss. And now this is a devastating loss. And you talk about Jake Long and uh, Henny and Hart coming back. But the defense was the big question mark. And they gave up a ton of points. What does that do to rattle their confidence now? Well, you know, defensive coordinator Ron English is going to have to rally these troops together. But you know what? He doesn't play. It's going to take the two leaders that's on that defense to pull these guys together. And that's linebacker Sean Crable and also safety Jamal. Adams. They have to get these young pups, rally them together and say, look, guys, we got to clean up the mistakes and have a sense of urgency. Run to the ball, play in, play out, exactly like App State did. And you know what? One play at a time and one game at a time. And it's not going to get easy. They have 
Dennis Dixon, Jonathan Stewart, and big receiver Jason Williams coming to town next week. So they better clean up their technique and get things going, Tim. Absolutely right. I mean, we hear people say a lot about, you know, a whole lot of adversity. Well, heck, I don't think this is adversity. I think this is like more like a meltdown. This team is having a lot of problems if they come in here and allow one double-A team to beat them. What are they going to do to get ready to, do, to, to right this ship? They're going to have to come together and be one hump, become one heartbeat and get things done. And forget this, like I said, get that cornerback mentality and forget that this game ever happened. Operative word, meltdown, you use that <laughs> word. Can they win the Big Ten this year? Well, I don't know. I mean, they've been struggling all year long. I've said it'd be out of them in, in uh, Wisconsin to win the Big Ten. But after this game, I don't know. I mean, they just re real, real shaky. And I don't know. It's going to be tough for them to win the Big Ten this year. Yeah, if they play like they played today, it would be very difficult. Well, the Michigan Wolverines had never played a 1AA team before in Ann Arbor and uh, or the football championship subdivision now. And uh, I don't think they'd be <laughs> playing another one again. Historical pregame moments and up at Virginia Tech today. We'll touch on that when we come back. I promise to eat a vegetable as big as my head. As big as my head. I promise to be more patient. I promise. I promise. I promise to hug my wife. American Family Insurance. We promise to treat your family like our family. Like our family. And help make sure you're covered. Current. And competitive. American Family American Insurance. American Family Insurance. American Family Insurance. Promise has a color. We love that color. Nike Hirachi 2K4, only at Dick Sporting Goods. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Ding dong! Link's Jerky. Feed your wild side. Well, welcome back to Sports Center U. Virginia Tech playing football for the first time since the uh, tragedy on their campus last April. Honoring the lost with a patch. Trying to help the healing process as Frank Beamer leads the Hokies out in pregame. We will never forget and we will always honor the memory of those taken from us too soon and those who are still recovering from that day. Well, check out the Hokie fans, huh? the Hokie Nation. They are ready to go, and they are jacked up to see Virginia Tech and East Carolina. Skip Holtz thought that they would be sacrificial lambs. They played pretty doggone tough. Pierre Bell with an early pick. First play from scrimmage. Uh, something that you don't want to do. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to start out with a turnover. You got everybody jacked up and wanting to see a great game, and you go out and turn the ball over, then you come back, and you run it back, cough it up. I mean, that's a tough way to start, but you got to give East Carolina credit. Yeah, after the Brandon Orr fumble, Chris Johnson capitalizes. 7-3 Pirates on top, but in Blacksburg. Frank Beamer says, all right, I'll rely on the defense thing, guys. Victor Harris. Victor Macho Harris. Good. He's macho. Why? He dives in the end zone for the touchdown. Anytime a cornerback can put points on the board, it helps the defense be great, and that's what Virginia Tech has. 10-7, fourth quarter. Glennon says, hey, I can be macho, too. Sam Wheeler for the touchdown, 17-7. Yeah, that was a great toss by Glennon. I'm telling you, he's going to need to do that next week at LSU. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but the Hokies pick up a 10-point win. Uh, let's check out Glennon's numbers, 22 of 33, 245 touchdown. Decent numbers, uh, but the INT early certainly uh, put them back on uh, their heels. And Brandon Orr just, uh, well, 23 carries, you think, with 23 or get uh, 100 yards, just 70 yards. And uh, Frank Beamer picks up the victory, though, as uh, LSU sits on the horizon. I thought it was a, it was a great atmosphere in there. And, and uh, you know, the uh, and I thought, I think, uh, uh, what I said starting out, I thought people were saying, hey, we care about each other and we're stronger than ever. And I thought that was obvious quite a few times in there. 
Oh, it's incredible. That's why we talked about, you know, since this happened. We knew a lot was going to be on our shoulders, and we knew we had to come out here and represent. I feel like we did that today. Man, I mean, right when the, uh, when the Sandman started playing, I see everybody jumping around. I mean, I just got goosebumps all over my body, and I just couldn't even hold back my emotion. I just turned back to my teammates and just told everybody, this is what we came here for. We're playing for uh, all 32 families. This is what we're here for. Just go out there and just give you all. Well, guys, the Hokies all defense last year. They gave up 29 sacks. They give up four more sacks today. But, you know, with LSU sitting on the horizon, uh, am I taking too much away from East Carolina to say the Hokies were probably looking ahead? I don't think so. I think Virginia Tech is very, very lucky to go out here and escape with the victory because East Carolina came out to play, and those guys felt the pressure of going out there playing against uh, a team with all that backdrop of emotion of that tragedy, and uh, I think the Virginia Tech players were affected by that, and they played flat, and they just didn't play the type of game that they're capable of playing, and I think when you, when you got that type of situation, you have to be able to overcome it, and they did a good job, but they got a win, but I think they struggled a little bit. They weren't sharp. Yeah, it was great to, for them to get the win, especially for the situation they were involved in. But now it's time to go down to LSU, and let's face it, it's going to be a defensive battle. Four sacks today. You know, if they kept that up, that'd be 52 sacks for the year. <laughs> let's go to South Bend, Indiana. Let's check this score now. Georgia Tech losing last year 14-10. I think it's stuck in their craw because 33-3. Notre Dame getting a wallop there by the Yellow Jackets. You see Choice, 25 carries, 169 yards. He's up to a 196 now with a couple of uh, touchdowns. So what does this mean for Notre Dame? Now they go 0-1. But, uh, of course, Brady Quinn and the gang, uh, they're gone. So what does it mean down the stretch for Charlie Weiss? Well, one of the problems is they start the game with Demetrius Brown. Then Evan Sharpley comes in. Anytime you see a situation where you have a quarterback tandem, one guy plays one week, another guy plays another week, it really sends a message through the team that we're not confident with each guy or either guy, and it really throws the team off balance. I've only seen one team really do it successful, and they won a national championship last year. And another thing, Notre Dame is just not that good. They just don't have the players and the horses to get it done. Georgia Tech came in and handled business. Does that surprise you? Because it seemed like Notre Dame was starting to swing. The pendulum was going to come back, and they were getting some recruits in there. Well, well, it is coming back. I and mean, Defensively, Corin Brown, a defensive coordinator, switched over to a 3-4, and he's got these guys buying into the system, and they're playing well. I know they've got 33 points on them, but it starts up front. Trevor Laws is doing a great job. They had a big time D tackle there. And let's not forget about Zibikowski on the back end. These guys, they're going to get together, but they just need help from their offense. Well, Georgia Tech must be pretty good then because they are walloping uh, right now as Jimmy Clausen has just uh, taken over the snaps now at quarterback for Notre Dame down 33-3. to Let's go to Camp Randall now. Uh, Wisconsin Badgers almost ran the table last year and uh, Brett Bielema, well, he lost John Stocko, but Tyler Donovan finds uh, Garrett Graham for the 11-yard score and uh, and then the uh, Cougars actually grab the early lead it's 7-7 now and uh, the Cougars bounce back again and the Cougars are giving the Badgers all they can handle all they can handle I mean Bialima came out won 12 games as a rookie coach and you know Washington State stepped in there and said hey we can handle these guys but not anymore PJ Hill 42 21 so they open up about one and oh how about Western Michigan and West Virginia it's all Pat White and Steve Slate they just take turns here you see Pat White draft back you know Heisman candidate to Heisman candidate Steve Slayton turning on a turbo just he's fast but not that fast Goes 50 yards, so Pat White steps in. He says, well, hey. I, I'm not going to let my other Heisman compadre outdo me. I'm just going to take a 39 touchdown and direct a little traffic and score myself. Slayton says, anything you can do, I can do better, though. He had 33 <laughs> touchdowns in his last 20 games. Here's his second touchdown today, right up the middle, 58 yards. You know, uh, we've given so much credit to Slayton and White, but you know what? Did you see the hole he just ran through? What a great job by the offensive line. 56 points on the board. How about the Gators, the defending champions? And how about Tim Tebow? Says, hey. I can throw. I'm more than a short yardage running back. He is. Tim D Tebow did an outstanding job of showing the world that, hey, he can throw touchdown passes, too. He can beat you with his leg and his arm. He did a great job today. 59 to Riley Cooper, and uh, here's Percy Harvin getting on the action. You know, he's getting a, a gr doing a great job of reading the defense, too, finding his open receiver, even though they're, they're really open, but he's doing a good job throwing the ball. Yeah, he has a nice touch on that one. 42 yards to Riley Cooper. 49-3 Gators. Uh, they go on to win a Jalen. Parmalee, running back, Rockets, they're at home in the glass bowl against the Purdue Boilermakers. That game is coming up in about six minutes. How good's your home? What color should we go with? Oh, we're painting the living room. Yes, 
we are. Trying to find the right color? The Home Depot can help you choose and coordinate beautifully. This weekend, get $5 off one-gallon cans and $20 off five-gallon buckets of number one rated bare interior paint. The Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. I'm glad I thought of this. Yeah. Marquez is back. Super featherweight champion Juan Manuel Marquez faces top contender Rocky Juarez. Big right hand for Marquez. Ferrero stunned and in trouble. Now a giant left hook by Juarez. Yassine Uma versus Sergio Mora. Plus world featherweight champion Robert Guerrero versus dangerous Martin Inario. And Francisco Bajado versus Steve Ford. Fireworks. Marquez Juarez. Live on Dish Network pay-per-view. Fireworks. Don't miss it. Live on Dish Network pay-per-view. What would you do with an extra $2,500? I'd buy more clothes. I'd go fishing. You could be next. Correctly answer two simple trivia questions in a row and you're entered. We're giving away $2,500 each week for 13 weeks. I'm going to need a bigger closet. Happiness is a private charter. One of our lucky weekly winners will have a chance to win $100,000. You better text. You could be next. Just text CASH76 to 79608. Welcome back to Sports Center U, and we saw some history in the football championship subdivision, formerly Division I AA in Ann Arbor today. How about this, guys? Division Three. here's some history. Take a second to digest this, huh? 52 first quarter points, 75-7, the final. Uh, is tackling in it? Was it happening in that game? <laughs> <laughs> Flag football. <laughs> uh, Mount Union's always tough. Uh, let's stay in Ohio, this time in Columbus in the horseshoe. Lawrence Wilson, the defensive end, broke his leg for the Buckeyes today, but Todd Beckman's been waiting a long time to play quarterback, and now it's his turn. You know, he showed some flashes of things that they can be promising. That was a good pass, hitting him for touchdown. Sanzenbacher for the touchdown. Chris Wells uh, shared the spotlight last year, gets in for a 14-0 lead. And check this out now. Wells again. He can be a load. He's a load. Anytime you can run the football like Ohio State is doing now, they're going to be tough. I mean, they look pretty good. So, yeah, they're playing Youngstown State, but they look good on that play. It's Beckman's job at it. Antonio Hinton, the backup, says, hey, don't forget about me. That was a good ball when he hit Beckman. You know, with a running game, Beckman's going to be okay. Orion Washington on the receiving end. Jim Harbaugh, the former Michigan quarterback, now the head coach at Stanford. First game, he's got to face a left-hander. And Ben Olsen and Joe Cowan, touchdown, Bruins on top. Cowan having a big day. And uh, Olsen uh, playing pretty well, too. Of course, Patrick Cowan has a hamstring, so Olsen doesn't have to look over his shoulder. This is Gavin Ketchum. Wow, nice stiff arm. 38-17, the Bruins on top. Big year for Carl Durrell, I would think. Big day, uh, big day for Randy Shannon, his first uh, day as the head coach of Miami. I think he did an outstanding job. I mean, it's his first year as a head coach in Miami. You know, he was a defensive coordinator. We knew these guys would play good defense. Yeah, Tavares, Tavares Gooden with 32 yards. And then uh, Greg Cooper, 56. He's got some burners here, isn't he? He was. And this is what they were there not counting on. You know, two backs going over 100 yards. Cooper showed a lot of speed. Cooper winds up with 115, and there's Javaris James. Breaks to the outside, eight yards. Two touchdowns for James today. Hey, how about that? He looked like his brother, the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Alfonso Smith steps in front of Matt Ryan, takes it back for the touchdown. Wake opens up an early 14-0 lead, but then your guy, the first team, all ACC last year, Matt Ryan, just gets into a group. You know, he heats up here, hitting one of five touchdowns he threw today. Matt Ryan did a great job. And then uh, Dewan Tribble, that's his third pick of the ball game. So who gets the game ball, Ryan or Tribble? Tim, you're a D. I I don't know. You, I, you know, I'm going with the D. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> get him out of Tribble. Let him have it. You know, quarterbacks get all the glory. Riley Skinner, the quarterback for Wake Forest, went out with a separated shoulder. And BC's Matt Ryan, another touchdown. That's five for the day. Nevada, Nebraska. Sam Keller, the former ASU quarterback, picked off by Jonathan Amaya. He takes it 79 yards. Amaya looked like T-Mac running down that side. <laughs> He's got to add about 20 more yards to it. I thought they might be an upset, but Nevada, you know, hung in there. But you knew it was just a matter of time before Nebraska rolled. Right. Marlon Lucky, 14-7. Marlon Lucky again, 17 yards this time. Yeah, Marlon Lucky has the whole backfield to himself this year, and he's taking advantage of it. 
All right, 52-10 Nebraska. They say they're ready to turn the corner. And 40-34 Missouri on top of your guys, Illinois. You know, Sam Keller looked real good throwing that ball. Hey, how about Dan Hawkins? Overtime picks up a victory over Colorado State, 31-28. So a big win for he and uh, his son, uh, Cody. Coming up now, ESPNU. Rockets and Boilermakers from Toledo. Dave Armstrong, Mike Godfrey have the call. For Tim, Steve, I'm Mike Leeson saying so long. Enjoy the game. The Glass City gives us a window into the future of the 2007 college football season. Toledo and Purdue kick things off in prime time on the U. And it starts right now. Welcome to the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio, where tonight the Toledo Rockets from the MAC Conference, they open their campaign against the Boilermakers of Purdue from the Big Ten. You're watching ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by City. Well, hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong, and tonight we're here in Toledo, where they have just endured the longest offseason perhaps in their history. And it's not because they're coming off a losing campaign, their first in more than a decade. No, it's because of an alleged point shaving scandal that has rocked this place to its very core. Revelations that the FBI back in March were looking into a possible gambling ring that might include at least one, if not more, athletes from Toledo have taken the Rockets off of the sports page and onto the front page and this is a controversy that has some legs the FBI investigation is ongoing so with that as a backdrop we welcome you to this football season here in Toledo and there's a bit of a controversy too surrounding the quarterbacks here because we're going to see a two-headed monster for the Rockets Aaron Opelt will start but we'll also see Clint Cochran now we're so pleased to have joining us here on our ESPNU telecast all season long. Coach Mike Godfrey. Coach, it's going to be a pleasure. Dave, great to be with you. Well, when we look at this team from Toledo, one thing we know for certain with all of this other stuff surrounding them, they have a great running back in Jalen Parmalee. For Toledo to win this football game, Parmalee's got to run the football. They have to control the clock, keep Curtis Painter on the other sideline. That's their best chance to win. You talk about Curtis Painter. Of course, he's the quarterback for the Purdue Boilermakers. And when you look at Painter and this Boilermaker attack, they are very prolific, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. Curtis Painter's an excellent quarterback. He can throw the football. He did get picked off 19 times last year. Now, he has an array of wide receivers. Torin Bryant is the best in the country. You ready for some offense? I'm ready for some offense. We're going to see some offense as they light up the scoreboard here tonight in Toledo. The college football season kicks off next. Huskers. No. Huskers with a, with a Z? No. Ooh, a uh, husk guy. Take him. How about with that heart? Hus, heart, cur? No. Brasky guy, brasky pants, brasky man. Bet nobody's. Nope. Somebody's got that. You know what? I'm. I need to go write some more, and I'll. I'll be back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, how about Nebraska? Sorry, dude. Uh, Nebraska. You're watching Back on Campus, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. With Coach Godfrey, Dave Armstrong, welcoming you back to Toledo, Ohio. With the new rules in college football, we're going to see some change in strategy. And already, Purdue winning the opening toss. Normally, a team would defer. Not this year. Purdue wins the toss. They're going to take the kickoff because they have a guy in Dorian Bryant who is outstanding, and he might give him good field position. Dave, I'd say this right away. My first talk on college football ESPNU do not kick the ball to Dorian Bryant. 
You're asking for a home run to be returned against you. Freshman kicker. All right, that's his average last year, and that's with the old rules, kicking from the 35. Now you back him up five yards, and Bryant actually standing on his own 10-yard line. And here is Brett Broadbeck, who is... He's a freshman. I mean, a true freshman kicking in this atmosphere, kicking to Dorian Bryant for the first time. He better get it out of the end zone. It's a short kick. <laughs> and it's taken at the eight-yard line. And smothered at the 25 is... Parmalee, as uh, it's Toledo who starts on offense. It's actually... It was... Uh, uh, Curtis Painter now coming out for Purdue as here comes Painter on a 63-yard kick, a 16-yard return. There are Painter's numbers from a year ago, and when you look at that, 22 touchdowns, but the big problem for Painter last year, those 19 interceptions, he wants to cut down on that. An empty backfield. Painter all by his lonesome. Quick out. The pass is caught by Bryant. He spins on a one tackle and picks up a positive yard or two, and that's about it. So let's look at the Dick Sporting Goods lineups and the backs and receivers. Dorian Bryant, 87 catches last year for more than 1,000 yards. He is absolutely outstanding. Now, the offensive line for the Boilermakers, it's had to make things over, especially on the left side. Sean Sester's been a two-year starter over at right tackle. He moves over to left tackle. How he makes that adjustment could be a key in the key Keeping this passing attack going. There's the run by Jason Taylor. He gets it across the 30 up to the 32 yard line. The defense for Toledo, they've changed from a 3 4 to a 4 3, mostly because of Douglas Westbrook. This guy is a freak athletically. They want to get this sophomore more touches defensively. The linebackers, Greg Hay, last year, he wound up with 66 tackles, plus he picked it off three times. And the Secondary, Barry Church. They used five guys in that secondary, and Church, all Mac last year as a true freshman. He had four interceptions, returned two of those for touchdowns. Over the middle, pass is juggled but caught by Orton. He's up near midfield, all the way up to the 47-yard line. Dave, there's no way you can stop Purdue's offense because so many receivers. You got Brian, who I think's really good. Greg Gordon's another guy that catches a lot of footballs, has good hands, runs a short post pattern, had 58 catches last year, five TDs from Dayton, Ohio. So you know he wants to do well in the Buckeye State. Well, Orton coming off that Champs Bowl game, eight catches, as you mentioned, 95 yards. And right through the hands here of Jason Taylor. Pass was right on target from Painter. Taylor simply dropped it. The other thing, when you look at Purdue, they get rid of the ball quick. They're not asking Curtis Painter to take a lot of sacks or pressure. Mm -hmm. They get rid of the ball quick. Only 20 sacks given up by their offensive line last year. And that might be somewhat of a misnomer, as you mentioned, because they get rid of it so quickly. A lot of screens, a lot of quick passes. So second and ten for the Boilermakers. This time the handoff is to Corey Sheets. He stopped after a short game to midfield to the 50, but now that's going to bring up third and seven. Dave, the other thing when you look at Toledo, and I've watched Toledo and Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator, for a long time, he likes to blitz. You can't blitz Purdue because they get rid of the ball so fast they can hurt you on the blitz. And Joe Tiller, the most successful coach really in Purdue history. And he's going to become the all-time winningest coach, if not late this year, certainly early next year for the Boilermakers. Lots of time for Painter. Throws it into good coverage. Great coverage out there by Walter Atkins as he knocks the pass away. And that'll force a punt for Purdue. That's a good series for the uh, Rocket defense because everybody expected Purdue to march down the football field. Walter Atkins gets his right hand in there and deflects that football. Pretty good coverage. Orton looked like he had Atkins sealed coach to the inside. If that pass goes to the outside, I think it's a completion to Orton. There's the punt. It's going to take a 
Toledo bounce and down by Purdue at the 29 yard line. So that's where the Rockets will come on the attack for the first time. A short punt, just 22 yards. So here is Aaron Opel, a sophomore quarterback, kind of thrown into action last year. Clint Cochran was the starting quarterback to begin the year, but then Cochran got hurt. Opel came in as a true freshman. He threw six touchdowns with five interceptions, and you see 875 yards. That experience he gained last year, we'll see if it pays off this year. They mark the ball at the 30-yard line. Opel feeling pressure, able to get out of it, throws up a, a wild pass that is ruled incomplete. What a catch by Nick Moore, but he was out of bounds. Great hands by Nick Moore. Like to get Old Pelt off to a good start. All right, you look at the lineups brought to you by Dix and Jalen Parmalee. We've talked about him with over a thousand yards rushing last year. He started uh, slow and then really gained momentum. His last four games, he went over a hundred yards. John Greco, one of the best left tackles in the business. His coach says he'll play on Sundays. There goes Parmalee busting through the middle. He gets it up to the 36-yard line. So let's look at the defense for the Boilermakers. When you look at Purdue, they have a 4-3 front as well. Uh, Purdue comes in with uh, guys that, you know, they've simply got to do a better job on defense. They were ranked 114th in the nation out of 119 last year. Cliff Averill needs to knock some guys around from that outside. We'll get the rest of that defensive lineup for the Boilermakers after watching this and a flare pass that goes absolutely nowhere in fact they lose a few yards and that'll bring the punting unit out for Toledo so let's look at that defense for the Boilermakers the linebackers led by Anthony Haygood now a senior the secondary they're all back that's the good news for the Boilermakers the bad news is they were torched for 241 yards passing last year but Justin Scott he comes back in his senior campaign after picking three last year. Brett Kern sends one deep. It's picked up at the 15-yard line and some room to run. Here comes Desmond Tardy across midfield. He goes out at the 35. Wow, what a return for Desmond Tardy. A 60-yard return. Great field position. Pretty good punt by Kern. Missed tackle, another missed tackle. All of a sudden the blocks arrive. Another missed tackle. You get a lot of missed tackles early in the season on special teams. Flag on the field. There is a flag on the play. So we'll see. The flag is around midfield. Our referee tonight, Nick Define. In the return, number 33. That's a 15 yard penalty. First down. A penalty against Jason Taylor, and it's more than just a 15 yard penalty. Big. Instead of giving it at the 35, it's coming all the way across the other side of the field. Bottom of the screen, you're going to watch the low block right there. A that's mistake. again. You got to block high. And that's to protect those athletes. Every coach out there is so afraid of punt Dangerous. returns and kickoff returns because of the collisions that are involved. Dave, I want to say this. This is a pretty good crowd. As mm -hmm. long as this game stays close, Toledo has a chance to pull the upset because this crowd will be a factor in this game. There weren't any upsets today, were there, Coach? One major in day, <laughs> Little House. Boy, no kidding. Pass a little bit behind the receiver, Corey Sheets, and that probably ruined the timing of the play. Really did. You talked about the upset. I think that's the biggest upset in the history of football. We're talking, when of course, about Michigan, Michigan losing you today. You take a number five team, get beat by a one double A team, uh, a new version of the one double A. We know what uh, you're talking about. Football championship uh, series, but. Uh, that was big, and the big house is now the small house. You can call it one double A for all I care, Coach. It's easier for us to know what you're talking about, referring to it that way. Now a pass on into really good coverage. They're trying to get it out to Greg Orton. But again, good coverage by Toledo, and that brings up a third and a long nine. You go back to Appalachian State, the one thing about them, 
They're used to winning. Yes. They played a lot of Division I teams close. They won the national championship last year. Two years in a they, row, actually. They're used to winning. Jerry Moore, their head football coach, coached at Texas Tech, North Texas. He's been around. Painter rolls out to buy some more time. His pass too high intended for Lyman. So Painter off to somewhat of a shaky start, just two for seven in his passing today. It's going to be a game here early where both offenses can't get uh, on track and both punters, uh, good punters for uh, Purdue. Jared Armstrong is a great punter. He can kick that ball and, and Kern on the other side. So the punters are going to uh, really determine field position. Nick Moore back deep. He's telling everybody to get away from it. Armstrong with another short kick. His last one just 22 yards. This one off the side of his foot. Toledo will have great field position. They'll start at their own 40-yard line when we return in just a moment. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Okay. <laughs> sorry. We're sorry. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Jack Link's jerky. Feed your wild side. <laughs> this group, come on. It's not easy going it alone. That's why we're making it easier than ever to get a State Farm agent for car insurance. Call an agent's office 24-7. Stop by or go to statefarm.com to get an agent who's there for you. Online, on the phone, or in the office. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Maybe your car is trying to tell you something. Maybe it's asking for the hard-working gasoline at Phillips 66, gas specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks, which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. Give your car what it's asking for. Give it Phillips 66. Hard-working gas. I've got Mike Joyner here, MVP of today's Donahue Baxter wedding. Mike, quite a performance. Yeah, well, it was a team effort. Without that block from Sully, I would have never been able to watch a Chicago-St. Louis game cast. We saw there was a lot of talk between you and Sully. Care to comment? Oh, yeah, he just over to hang in there and do what I got to do, you know? <laughs> Thank you, All Mike. Right. <laughs> Live from the Donahue Baxter wedding, back to you in studio. Be an ESPN MVP, only with VCast, Fantasy Management, Baseball Tonight clips, live game casts, and more. With ESPN MVP, exclusively from Verizon Wireless. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by City. Let's get it done. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Can I add to that? Get her done? <laughs> well, I don't know. You might have to talk to Larry the Cable Guy about that. With our own cable guy, Mike Gottfried. I'm Dave Armstrong. Glad to have you with us here at the Glass Bowl. Toledo, they take back on the offensive side of the ball at their own 40 yard line. Aaron Opelt really kind of went nowhere his first time. Now Parmalee, he busts through a hole and fights for some extra yards. A gain of five on first down. Parmalee's got to get to football. They have to establish a run. On the other side, you get Aaron Opelt as a quarterback. He needs to get a good start because they're going to play the second team quarterback Glenn Cochran, so you really playing two, you don't have one. Does that put more pressure on pressure. Opel? I a mean, lot of pressure. Because now all of a sudden, he's not, he feels like he's fighting for his job here tonight, doesn't he? Pass is complete across midfield. That'll be a first down as they throw it out to Stephen Williams, a tall wide receiver, a sophomore who's 6'5". Dave, I like the idea of playing the second quarterback, but I don't like it to be defined where the guy, the starter, knows he's coming in the second quarter, mm -hmm. and you have you beat him by a, a nose in fall practice, so you, you'd like to give him more time. Well, you wonder if they're going to settle at some point during the season. You would think they would. 
Pass this time completed as Nick Moore makes the catch and goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So, in a sense, Toledo Tom, Tom Amstutz, the head coach of the Rockets, a little bit under fire for this decision to go with a two-quarterback system. Yeah, Aaron Opelt is the better athlete. He threw the ball very well on the run. He runs the ball very well. Toledo Tom. And again, some good hard running. That'll be good enough for the first down as they get it down to the 35-yard line. There's Clint Cochran. Of course, he was the starting quarterback last year. Right now, he is signaling in the plays. We will see him in the second quarter for sure. We were asking Coach uh, Amsutz yesterday, all right, let's, let's assume that Opelt goes like 15 for 15 in the first quarter goes crazy. He said you'll still see Cochran. Hey, you're going to see Cochran in the second quarter no matter what. Well, a good decision there by Opel to bring it back down. His pass, though, in tight quarters was a little bit too hard. Toledo Tom needs to get the ball to Toledo Parmalee. <laughs> <laughs> because he gives you the best chance to win. You know, it's amazing, though. He always goes against the grain, doesn't he, yeah, Toledo he does. Tom? You know, you, when you think, <laughs> you know what, the best strategy is to run Parmalee, run Parmalee, run Parmalee. And he told us that yesterday he was going to do that. Well, then guess what? He comes out and he throws the ball a lot here But tonight. you're playing against a defense that has not stopped a run last year. Well, they didn't stop the pass, though, either. <laughs> There's a fumble. Well, fortuitous bounce. And maybe all. Toledo. Tell you what, you, you get a bounce like this. The Indians last night got a bounce like this. Cleveland Indians won a big game. Toledo Collins in the end zone with a good bounce. So Dewan Collins, who scored three touchdowns last year, he gets Toledo on the board first. A 35 yard touchdown run. The extra point from Steigerwald is good, and it's 7-0 Toledo. DeWan Collins fumbles the football. It bounces right back into his lap, and he takes it 35 yards into the end zone. Are these numbers right? Yes. You know what this means? It means we have doubled in the last six months. So we're gonna have to hire more people, move into a bigger space to get those key card things. But we'll need to order a lot more wood. But what if this continues? Dave, isn't that kind of the idea? Citibank Business Banking. Whatever your growing business needs, Citibank's there with guidance and customized solutions to help your business thrive. Come to City and let's get it done. We've left the most treasured game in the world to be played in the shadows, where its speed, power, and passion have remained unseen. Now, a new stage is set, with new stars bringing light that soccer's time has come. How long has he been up there? I don't know. I think a while.
college football lives here on ESPN. And to see it all, you need the ESPN Game Plan Pay-Per-View Package. With key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, you'll get up to 12 extra games every Saturday. Order now and you'll be all set for a full season of great college football with ESPN Game Plan. ESPN Game Plan presented by Olivia. Just $129 for a limited time. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Games also available on ESPN360.com. Toledo gets on the board first. A couple of short punts by Purdue. They take advantage of the field position. And finally, Dewan Collins, who bounces one off the carpet and goes 35 yards for the touchdown. Hey, coming up later, Texas Southern versus Prairie View AM tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern. College football on ESPNU continues as the Tigers take on the Panthers. College football primetime presented by City tonight at 10 Eastern on the U. So one, here he is, just licking his chops, waiting one to go. Mistake, one mistake in this game is tied up. Do not kick him the football. That's Dorian Bryant, of course. The kicker is a freshman, Brent Broderick. And his first kick did not go to Dorian Bryant. This is a real short kick, almost like a pooch kick. It's taken by Taylor. He bobbles it, picks it up across the 30. He gets up to the 38-yard line. You know, the bouncing it off the carpet trick didn't work for Purdue like it did for Toledo. A 50-yard uh, kickoff, a 15-yard return. Joe Tiller from Toledo used to come to the games when he was a kid. He said he hoisted the guy over the fence. He opened up the gate. By my uh, calculations, he probably owes Toledo about 100 bucks for about eight <laughs> years of games. Well, they've also complimented some tickets tonight for family members. There's a nice run here by Taylor, and he's still on his feet across midfield, finally brought down at the 40-yard line. But Tiller, he left about 70 to 75 tickets for family members. He said that was one of the hardest things he had to do all week. He said Paul Roos. Paul Roach, a former coach of Wyoming, told him, never open on the road if you have a choice. <laughs> he signed off on this game, so he has himself to blame. Well, he comes back home, too. What do they say about you can't go home again? His very first <laughs> game some ever. some guy named Thomas Payne. Yeah, was right, that him? Right. And, and, and guess what? He went home for the first time ever at Purdue. His first game was right here in Toledo, and he lost to the Rockets. So now here he is back again, hoping for a little bit of revenge. I like good teams answer a score. I've always said that. I believe that when a coach, if somebody scores on you, the next drive, you got to take the football down and answer the score. Tiller, who's really turned around this Boilermaker program, now in his 11th year in West Lafayette. Second and four. And we've got flags flying before the play could get underway. And our referee tonight, Nick Devine. The five yard penalty. Normally, when you see a play like that or a whistle before the play, first it's down. against the offense, right. but this time against the defense, defense, and that'll bring up a first down. Joe Tiller, you're talking about him 75, 49, and 10 years. That's pretty good at Purdue. Yeah, it is. Uh, Jack Mullenkopf, the uh, all time winningest coach of Purdue, was a fixture there. He was. 84 wins for Mullenkopf, coach. So he's only nine away from matching that. And that's, now. That's gone back, Dave, the other way. They. You're right. They, they did caught it on the offense. <laughs> That's a five yard penalty. Remains first down. All right. So now you're back to where you started. But instead of second and four, now it's first and 15. Right. You've, you've really lost a lot here in the shuffle, haven't you? You've lost a lot. But I tell you, Purdue right now feels pretty good about their running game. Jason Taylor, the small back, 5'10, 186 junior, is running the ball. The offensive line doing a good job. I know you have grandkids. This looks like the Candyland approach to offense. Five steps forward, five steps back. Let's get you an update from Lowell Galindo in the studio. 
Well, guys, it looks like Oklahoma has another great young running back. This is DeMarco Murray, 44-yard touchdown on this one. Oh, my goodness. They said he was huge in the spring. I think they have a running back. Huge right there. Oklahoma leads 14-0 over North Texas. All right, Lowell, Tim, thanks a lot. I'll tell you, they don't miss Adrian Peterson, at least not yet. We'll see. It's early. Believe me, they miss him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second down, 15 yards to go. And the give is to Bryant. He was coming on an end around, and Bryant, he wiggles down to the 20-yard line. It looks like another first down. Best player on the field. You have to get him the ball. Bill Legg, one of the coordinators on offense, said we designed 15 plays to get the ball in number nine's hands during Bryant. 5'10", 175, fast and very quick. So Bryant finally touches the ball. It was third and very short, so they'll run it up the middle to get the first down inside the 20. Painter kept it himself, and he's down to the 18-yard line. Dave, down here, also Purdue's got a weapon, number 28, the tight end, Dustin Keller. He's 6'4", 240, a small tight end type of guy, mm -hmm. but a very tough guy to defend down here with linebackers. He's grown into that position, Tiller. He was a wide receiver when he came at only 185 pounds, so he's put on about 60 pounds in college. We'll give here to Corey Sheets, and he takes it inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line, a gain of five. Talking about Keller, Toledo recruited him. He said, I'm going to come to Toledo. On the last day, signing day, Purdue talked him in to sign him with Purdue. They had lost some guys. What a big loss for Toledo, but a big game for Purdue. Second and five, seventh play of this drive. And right up through the gut, into the end zone goes Sheets. Wow, Sheets really knows how to get into the end zone. 11 touchdowns last year. He scores, and now just a point away from tying the game. Sometimes when you play a passing team, all of a sudden your, your defensive line are rushing the passer. They got that mindset. The secondary is worried about receivers, and all of a sudden Purdue opens up the running game on uh, Toledo's defense. Point after is good from Chris Summers. And just like that, Corey Sheets from 13 yards out, he finds the end zone for the first time this year and for the 22nd time in his Purdue career. We're tied at seven. Energizer E squared lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. Bye, hon. Find us a good one. Bye. With 2 million vehicle listings on cars.com, there it is. You can find the right car for you. Cars.com. Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. All right, boys. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Running out of that tunnel. Unbelievable. With the season coming to an end, don't miss another day oh. in the summer house. Well, that was definitely an experience just to look around the stadium. Summer house, Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Presented by Under Armour. No. 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 What? It had a virus. The computer is not the problem, Mr. Tucker. It's your network. With Verizon high speed internet, you'd have a dedicated line and automatic security updates every three hours to keep viruses out. You could also get firewall and spyware protection. Hmm. Step up to Verizon high speed internet for one low price. When you do, you can add the most advanced security protection available for just a few dollars more. Get internet service 20 times faster than dial-up, plus the unsurpassed protection of the Verizon Internet Security Suite, all on the network you know and trust. You giving rides? Not today.
the speed you need, the security you deserve, all on a dedicated line. Order Verizon high-speed internet for one low price and get the Verizon Internet Security Suite for just a few dollars more. Visit us online for an even better offer or call 1-866-730-9361 now. Verizon, it's the network. Well, the vaunted passing attack for Purdue has been grounded somewhat. They've averaged almost nine yards per carry, including a 13-yard touchdown run by that man, number 24, Corey Shees. So see the future stars of football on ESPN. And ESPNU, they deliver two high school games on Sunday. First at noon Eastern, it's St. Xavier. The Ohio Bombers face the Mantha Maryland Stags. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Central Catholic, Pennsylvania. The Vikings taking on North Mount, Ohio, the Thunderbolts. 2007 Burger King. Curb Street, Ohio, and USA Challenge Sunday on ESPN and ESPNU. Central Catholic has one of my former coaches' sons as quarterback, Sal Sinceri, who coaches for the Carolina Panthers. Boy's a good prospect. High end over end kick up to the 20 yard line. And stumbling out of there. Here comes Toledo up to the 30. I mean, Five yards has been added to the kickoffs, but these guys haven't broken the 15 yard line. A lot line. of pooch kicks. A lot of pooch. It's by strategy then to do that. Right. Well, you look at the scoring drive, and again, a 13 yard run, and they stayed on the ground for much of that drive. Yeah, Sheet, Jason Taylor, Dorian Bryant on a run. Again, uh, good teams answer the score. Uh, veteran teams like Purdue, they got a Nine starters back on offense, nine on defense. A lot of key players, a lot of senior.